Oh my, my, my. It looks like we've already got quite a few viewers. Why are you all here? You know I don't start on time. Aha, uh -huh, and yet, and yet, who could that be but Vanilla Orion in the flesh? VTuber flesh. Well, it is, it is. Taco Bell ad. You don't say, you don't say. Oh, wait a minute, is um. Uh, ooh, I would prefer my speakers be in my headphones please please i can't believe someone murdered cereal well you best believe it crew saying welcome welcome but sorry to say there's a cereal murder on the loose yeah they think your viewers want taco bell isn't that crazy isn't that wild isn't that insane isn't that kooky isn't that loco isn't that just straight up bonkers Oh, wonderful! To waking up exactly when Vanille goes live, Del End! Well, isn't that very, very special? Then I am very, very happy to have a cheers, come pie, salute to you waking up right when you needed to. You've got this in the bag. You know when it's time to wake up. You're not waking up a moment before. You know what you're here for. <laughs> cheers! Clink! Oh my! Dr. Dreads! Oh, look at this timing! Look at this wonderful timing! Alright, I love it, I love it! Welcome in, welcome in! Good to see you, how are you? Hi, Vanilla and Chat, hi, right back at ya! And we had, oh, that genie problem! Well, welcome in! Good thing I didn't miss you, glad to see you, glad to see you back! All right, I think we're all good here. Wow, what a what a powerful start. This is fantastic. I am so, so happy to be back. It's not like I was doing nothing while I was gone. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw, but Jack and I did do a special cover together uh, in the style of Frank Sinatra and Ella Fitzgerald uh, called That's Why the Lady is a Tramp. I love that song, and I was so excited to be able to sing it. So, if you haven't, I believe both of us have retweeted it, and it's on Jack's channel. Hey there, hey, and the man of the hour, would you look at that? And thank you, Jack. Welcome, my VIP lovely. I hope you enjoy your card. I'll, I'll be sure to send it in the mail a little later. Flash that, baby, whenever you like. <laughs> Oh, it was a great cover, wasn't it? Thank you, thank you. We worked so, so hard. <laughs> Speak of the devil, huh? And he doth appear. Indeed, impeccable timing as always, Jack. I appreciate that. I appreciate a man who knows how to come and when to come. <laughs> 
Oh, Dizzy. Hello, hello, lovely. How are you? First time chatter. Well, thank you for stopping by. Lovely to have you, darling. Let me know if I can get you anything. We've got all sorts of lovely drinks. And I'm so proud of us. Yes, yes, we worked very hard. We, we surmounted all odds. We had a bit of trouble with our art. We really did. Voya! Voya, my boya! <laughs> Happy to see you, the Bev Queen. Oh, I like that. I gotta put that on a crown and wear it. Remind me. I, I'll whip that up in some MS paint. I could do that. I've been practicing, you guys. I've been flexing my art chops. It's not good. But it is. It is. It is. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Goosing says, a song got stuck in my head for a while after listening to it, so it's great. I am so happy to hear that. I'm so glad that you guys liked it. We had a lot of fun. All right. Oh, do we have an ad break in progress? I'm being warned there's an ad break in progress. That's all right. That's all right. Why don't we go ahead and load up the game? Put on a little ambiance. Come on. Let's see. Let's see. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Where did you go? I just ah ha ha. Here we are. Here we are. May I link the cover for those? Um. Hold on, hold on, Jack. Let me make you a moderator because I believe, I believe I have it set to only moderators can post links. All right, you should be good now. Yes, yes, yes. Let's try that. <clears throat> Let's see if that doesn't do it. Take up your sword and defend my channel, Jack. I will feel so bad <laughs> if, it, if it does not allow you to. But I do think that's the key. Ma Jack, congratulations. Moving up in the world, aren't you? Power in hell and now here on earth that ever yours. Ooh, my. Ooh, and I've got some lovely bone broth to sip on. But it is very hot. Very hot indeed. There it is, Vanilla and Jack's song cover, The Lady is a Tramp, for your listening auditory pleasure. You know, the music in this game is really, really nice, too. I'm really enjoying it. I'll probably start in just a couple of minutes. Just a couple. Because, well, I'm not proud of it, but, um, I'm not usually a timely gal. Really, it's not my fault. Things just pop up always last minute. So, really, I would be on time, but it's everyone else's fault, as you know. I can do no wrong. However, other people can. And then I'm forced to try to reckon with it in the very moment that I'm supposed to go live. So, poor me, really. Poor Vanille, doing her best. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you, Cruising. You understand. You get it. You've got my number. All right, let's see. But yes, we're going to give it just a minute. Just a minute now. Oh, head pats. Well, don't mind if I do. Thank you for the head pats. Vanille can do no wrong. It's true. It's true. I have literally never done anything wrong in my entire life. So, it's hard being so perfect. But we try to carry on. We do. All right, well, is there anyone here that needs a slight recap from our last playthrough of The Serialized Killer? That guy's sideburns go so hard. Oh, yes, he's got those professor sideburns. All right, all right, let's start with a nice little recap. Get everybody nice and cozy and ready to go. This is a world where, where people have little demons residing inside their souls. These things manifest in different ways, almost like different uh, personifications or other sides of people. These can be bad habits, dark feelings, repressed trauma. 
Now these two are professors and assistant professors in their own right who've studied this phenomenon. Uh, I believe they're called imps. <coughs> Pardon me, sorry for the coughing there. And these imps, they should be treated with care and respected and you can live alongside them, but people have started using them as almost decor, as a fashion statement. Oh, I wish I could stay the whole stream, but I have to be at work at 6 a.m. Well, goodness gracious, I do not blame you. Stay as long as you can, darling. Dip when you must. Getting sleep is the most important thing to maintaining a healthy, happy lifestyle, I dare say. You know, a drink or two there doesn't hurt, but uh, sleep is the most important and the best indicator of how the next day is going to go. So, of course, of course, do what you must. Very happy you popped in when you did. And thank you again for the link. Oh, that's right. I wanted to see if I could link it. Or I could pin it, rather. Yes, yes. That's perfect. Go up. I don't want to see you anymore. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. Anyway, uh, where was I? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Memory of a nap. Ah, oh, yes, so these two are also paranormal investigators, detectives, as it were, and they were invited to hold a seance that they might meet the soul of the recently departed lovely young lady that was a friend of the author that our dear boys knew personally, and um, she was murdered. And shortly after, the author that wanted to meet with her was murdered. So now we're trapped in the house with a bunch of eccentric characters with their strange little imps that they are misusing and abusing. And we are, well, we are trying to figure out who did the first murder, who did the second murder, and what other murders might happen. We are just at the moment where we get to find the white-haired guy, I forgot his name, but we are going to get to meet his imp. Somehow he's going to help us solve the case. Not sure how yet, but we will find out. Ah, a nice soothing drink with a hint of sweetness. Let's see what we got in the back. Mm-hmm-hmm. <laughs> we'll get you something good, no worries. Yes, yes, hint of sweetness. <clears throat> trying to think, Jack. You know what? I think you want... I think you want... You know what? Let's go... Let's go with the lemon drop. Let's do that. Just a hint of sweet and sour, but easy, easy to drink. Slap that guy up there. Uh, that's not an olive, that's totally a lemon. <laughs> Have that. Indeed, indeed. Sip on that and then cruise off to sleep. Thank you for ordering at the bar. <clears throat> wow, Cube, you seem so hyper. What have you been drinking? What have you been eating? Too much sugar? Hmm? 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 You're all over the place. Look at you. Embarrassing. What do you have to say for yourself? Did someone call my name? Was it crazy or lemon drop? <laughs> I'm not sure. What could it have been? <clears throat> Embarrassing indeed. Calm yourself. Cube, calm yourself this instant. Oh, cru <laughs> cruise off to sleep. That was me. That was me. Little did I know. No more Mountain Dew for me. Oh my. Mountain Dew kept me up all night one time. I really didn't realize there was that much caffeine in one. I can't say that I drink a terrible amount of soda, as it were. Oh no, look at you both. Look at you both with the Mountain Dew. Now you're bouncing off the walls. You're being very distracting. You'd better calm down now. You better not mess up my bar. 
Oh my word, you're just bouncing off of each other. You're just bounce, bounce, bounce all over the place. Look at them! Bouncing around my bar. <clears throat> I may advertise myself as a hardcore gamer, but I cannot stand Mountain Dew. Cube is Baja Blasted right now. It's true, he is Baja Blasted way out of here. There's fleas in here! No, there is not! Stop that! Stop that! I just have crazy patrons with way too much energy. This is a flea-free zone. Nobody panic. Nobody panic. I am! Aren't we off to a fantastic start? We have not even started. Oh my god. Look at you both. Look at cruising and then Cube is just... Cube's gone crazy. Cube's gone mad with power. Baja Blast power. Whatever will we do? Well, Cube, I can only hope that as we recount these terrible murders, you will calm yourself to appropriate levels. <laughs> you don't know what you're gonna bounce into. You might bounce into some evidence. And then where will you be? Hang on, everyone. I got Cube. Oh, God. Oh, God. Well, now he's dead. That's a whole other mystery I have to solve. Now there's more work for me? I can't believe this. I've already got so much on my plate, and now you put a dead cube on there? Terrible. Well, I suppose we've given it enough time. We'll go ahead and start the game. Load. Faraday, Faraday, and I believe that's, is that his last name? <clears throat> Fine, stand back or go in the hallway or something. Sure. Faraday took a deep breath and took off his glasses. Oh, the colors changed. Well, I'm clicking and nothing's happening. Do I have to click an object? Oh, I do. Belle's script for the play. It burned up with her. Almost none of it's left. It's not salvageable. This is part of the script too. Hours and hours, all ashes. Will it ever, never get made because of this? What will happen if it's gone forever? I feel like Faraday could totally be a first name. It could, it could. I, I know that they kind of switch between first and second names a lot. Confuses me. An art style looks hand-drawn, you know, more on paper. Indeed! Watercolor-esque. I really like it. Oh, a ladder. What? What, what a sentence. Pulled open, something's missing. Something that belongs here is gone. What is that about? I won't be able to find it if it's not in this room. That's... What if that's the whole reason she was murdered? She was robbed, perhaps? Hmm. What a depressing thing to think about. Oh, why would we do that? Harry Seal would push me back. He would save me without even knowing. You don't say. Already looked there. I don't think these papers have anything to tell us. Well. I don't think there's anything else to look at. Unsure. Yeah, I checked everything. Oh, a burn mark. And one on the ceiling. A robbery gone wrong? It's a whole lot of murder just for a simple robbery at a dinner party. You'd think it would be done easily. Hmm. She died right here. Nobody heard it. You mean they burned her body before they burned her? That's not an easy way to off someone. Wouldn't it have made more sense for... Well, to be quite morbid, um, a stabbing or suffocation or something like that, but 
Burning her on the spot makes no sense. Did she just combust? What a question. I don't know, they could, they very well could. Oh, what? You could have done something with your life. What on earth? A man with no impact might as well have never existed. They'll wrote thousands more words than you ever will. You know, I thought there was a book here, and now I don't see it. Her work will outlive her. What work have you done? You don't matter. What on earth is happening? Nothing matters. Nothing you ever do will be worth anything to anyone. At least Harry has done something. You're too broken to finish a single thing. He's too good for you. When you die, not a single person will care or remember. <clears throat> not, but then there would be less evidence in the form of a body if she was burned. Well, the thing is, she was put into a kiln. We found her body downstairs, in the furnace. That's why I don't understand why you would burn her once and then burn her again. Oh my. Oh, the colors are getting more and more intense. Incomprehensible and impenetrable. His whole life felt like something he wished he could forget. His failures, his unfinished work, they all felt like a thousand pounds manifesting themselves on his chest. He stared at the room and every single object saw the terribleness of a cold, uncaring world that would burn or fade or rot. The room reminded him of how he didn't deserve to be there or anywhere. He was worthless. He lost control of his breathing and the world felt like a stage he wasn't even on. His heart raced and his face contorted into pain, gasping sobs. He couldn't make words. He struggled to stay standing or to catch his breath. Holly! I'm coming back in! Harold moved close, wanting desperately to make it stop and to put his arms around his shaking friend. Even though his arms ached to hold him, hoping that protective feeling would reach him. But he waited for permission. Faraday's voice was just a series of gasping sounds, but between them he managed a strangled word. Oh, okay. Oh my. Harry pulled him into a hug, and Faraday burst into tears, he moaned and tried to catch his breath between wordless pained utterances. I'm sorry. I'm right here, Holly. Harry's arms were tied around him, the pressure familiar. Holly wanted to sink deeper into the grip, to fall back through the years to when this embrace had been his on a whim. Even now, Holly could feel an awkward curl in Harry's fingertips. Hands once so comfortable with his body now didn't quite know what to do. Oh my, oh my, what on earth happened between these two? I should head to sleep. I need to fix my sleep schedule. Good night. Good night, good night. I hope you have a lovely night. Thank you so much for stopping in. I'm glad you at least got to see um, Faraday's specific imp, his special demon. I'm glad that you got to experience that. That's probably the most enticing thing we'll get to tonight, but we're very excited we got there. And let me know if you need a recap for next time. I'm happy to let you know and have wonderful dreams. It is sad, Dizzy. It is sad. What did you find out? Faraday choked back a bitter laugh. Right back at work, huh? Sorry. This isn't exactly a thing I do regularly. Right. Hopefully it was something important. You're really awful at comforting, you know? Sorry. No. Let's just stay here for a minute. That's enough. He almost felt Harry pull away. But with a sudden, fierce affection, his arms wrapped tighter. There was a lot he wanted to say. But he bit back every single one of those words. Salty-ass wee, first-time chatter, welcome in, welcome in. 
This game has such a cool art style. It really does. It really sucks you into this strange, unknown world. Back to work they go. <clears throat> the murder took place here. The burn mark. That's where she died. It wasn't in the boiler room. And whoever did it also burned up the entire final draft of her play. I'll get that written down. So, he grit his teeth and managed a cocky grin. Where to next? We've said everything we need to say to Deleuze, so let's head back into the hall. Alright, I wonder if there's anywhere we haven't gone yet. The bath? Well, I don't remember the bath. Let's check out the bath. So the door was open. The bathroom was occupied by a large occupant. An occupant occupies. It was a tight fit, all three of them standing inside. Hey, are you alright? Yeah. It's nothing. So, are you trying to figure out what happened? As a matter of fact, where were you when Belle was murdered? I was in here. The whole time? Yes. Goose's hat slipped even further over their eyes. They looked clammy. I feel sick. That does seem believable. Why did you steal from the curio case? I didn't steal anything. Deleuze said she heard you do it. She's wrong. I guess let's try someone else. It's... Ugh, really cramped in here. Please leave. Well, they're not wrong, are they? Hmm. Well, where on earth should we go? Should we encounter Deleuze and ask her about lying? Maybe. Welcome back! Gosh, how long has it been? It's been like... minutes. Couldn't you stay not here? It was so nice while you weren't here. Ah, oh, well then. Now I return to my important business. Still haven't found those snacks. We're not gonna ask her about why she lied? We're not gonna question her lying? That's an interesting choice. What is a to-do list? Dano? No way! Welcome, welcome! Do you lay awake at night wondering why, when we were as species get together in a group and want to voice our approval, we howl at the sky and slap our meat extremities together? Or are you normal? What a sentence! What an opening sentence, dear Dano! Howdy, howdy! Welcome in, welcome in. So glad that you are back. Please pull up your familiar chair. Ooh. A very quick recap. We're in a mansion. We've been summoned, me and my assistant, to create a seance. Now, we've studied demons, imps, that people in today's society in this world are using as almost little pets or decorations when really they're the manifestations of deep, dark, terrible feelings. And people are abusing them and using them for entertainment instead of really dealing with them. It gives them a strange power, but it can come back to bite them in the ass. Now we're trying to figure out why not only this one woman was murdered, but why her friend that wanted the seance to contact her was also murdered. And her script for her murder mystery has been burned to a crisp. We've got to interview people that are still at the mansion and find out what went wrong. 
I had trouble sleeping the other night and kept thinking about clapping and cheering. Wow! Well, I hope whenever you see fit, you are able to drift off to peaceful slumber. Don't let me keep you up, darling, but I'm happy to talk your ear off until you're ready to go. <laughs> Jack, I am so normal. No, huh? I believe he was in the dining room. I, I suppose we could go there. I hate that man. <clears throat> oh, it was Myers. Ah, oh, is it comforting here? What were you doing on the stairs? Yeah, Merrick said he saw you running on the stairs. Is he sure? Well, I'm sure that this death is going to put your stage show even more in the spotlight. Did you really want to travel and get famous that badly? See, that was my thought. That was my thought. I think she's the murderer. Of course not. At that moment, Clar Clarice could no longer hold back and burst into tears. On that note of sleep, I do need to get going. Good night, everyone, and have a great stream, Vanille. Thank you, Jack. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful night. I hope you get plenty of good rest. And you meet the day tomorrow with vigor and... God, I don't know. Not sleepiness. <laughs> Good night. Oh my, my voice. I need more of this beer. This champarado. <clears throat> Good night. There we go. My power, my fuel, my magic. I'm sorry. I didn't think anyone would even know, I... Clarice cried into her hands. I was on the stairs because I took the manuscript from the first story out of Belle's office. She probably had it out to write the play adaptation. I just really, really wanted to see it. I honestly thought I could just run down here and look through it without anyone seeing me and then run back up and put it back. Belle's office door was open. I snuck in there after an imp left. Well, that's not very true, is it? We had to use Deleuze's imp in order to get in the office. It was locked. Interesting admission from Miss Myers. Coffee is definitely on the breakfast menu. Good night. Good night. I thought it was a cleaning imp, but the place was a mess. And then I heard that scream. I shut the door behind me, hid the manuscript, and went to find out what happened. Are the imps basically enslaved? Yes, yes. It's a very odd turn. Because these imps, they're like the, like the shadow side of people. They're the dark side everyone has. And instead of incorporating them and working through them, People are putting them on display, making them do things. Very odd. We don't quite know what they are, but we know that these two have been studying them and know exactly what they're about and know that misusing them is not going to be safe for humans. Neato Torpedo, what a cool concept. The art of the imps is very cool as well. I hope we get to see some more because they're very interesting looking. Scrunt, welcome in, welcome in. So glad to see you. How have you been? Thanks for stopping by. Just enjoying a nice beer and a good murder mystery. Just the way I like it, of course. Why would you do that? Cube, calm down. Cube, did you sit more Baja Blast? I don't understand what this is all about. Oh, sour beers are lovely. Although this is not a sour beer. This is a Mexican hot chocolate beer called Champarado. And it is muy delicioso. Thank you for regaining your cool, Cube. 
We're interrogating a suspect. I, I need you to keep up the cool, all right? I need you to be, I need you to be low key. Don't scare off the suspect now, you hear me? Gotta keep it cool, calm, collected. I'm just a big fan who completely overstepped my boundaries. I'm so ashamed. Her eyes welled up again and she sniffed loudly. Now I can't even apologize to Miss Bell for it. I don't buy it, folks. I somehow think the actress has her act all too together. I love crying about overstepping my boundaries. Do you, Cube? Well, then you and Miss Myers might get along swimmingly. You both seem like people that could kill a man and then weep me some crocodile tears hoping to throw me off the case. Would you do that, Cube? Ah, oh, look at you at the ready. Look at you at the ready. I've got my eye on you. I've got your number. Wee! I'm sorry, wee! I figured you out, Cube. I'm sorry, wag! Did you turn into a dog? Wag huh? Wag huh? You think that's enough? You think that's enough to throw me? Wag? Hmm. All right, so the accomplice was a dog, huh? Ah, a little Freudian slip there, Cube. You really think you pulled one over on me, but I've caught you. I've caught you red-handed. Wag-handed, as it were. And I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. You can hide nothing from me. Oh, and add. Then we will just pause. An ad, huh? An old ad here to throw us off the trail. It's a car ad. A getaway car ad. Suspicious. Okay, I'm free. Really? You're free? It says that there's 30 more seconds to this ad break. I don't really know what the rules are, but as long as we're all raring to go, we're gonna ask her, where is the manuscript now? I hear you. Brilliant, brilliant. <clears throat> now let's see if she has an acceptable answer for us. It's on the windowsill, right over there. Clarice retrieved the stack of paper, still wiping away a few tears with her furry hand. I really was in here after that, I promise. I understand if you don't believe me after what I did. They really hope you find out who did this. Miss Bell was such an amazing writer and a kind person. Clarice looked at her feet and held the stack of paper out to Faraday. You should take this. I'm sick just thinking about it. If you can summon Miss Bell's ghost, please tell her I say I'm sorry. I'll do that. Harold and Faraday left the room feeling, not for the first time that night, deeply awkward. She seemed genuinely upset. I want to believe her. I want to believe no one killed Belle, but we have to be skeptical. For example, look at the manuscript. It's the first Constance Little Bear story. And as really neat as it is to be holding it for real, I could swear Belle said she wrote in blue ink. This is black ink. People lie all the time and for the weirdest reasons. Sometimes it's just really hard to tell what to believe. Indeed. Seems like everyone here has something they're hiding, but so do I. I, I can't judge. Oh, you can judge because you can hide things versus murdering. Murdering is a thing you are allowed to judge over. Maybe it was the parlor that bastard man was in. Noah did not seem pleased to see them returning. <coughs> Pardon me. Confront him with his motive. Deleuze claims you had a reason to kill Belle. She says you were trying to sabotage her. Having a motive doesn't mean I did it. Don't make us get her to come back. Noak rubbed his shoulder. 
That's right, because Harold used his uh, special evil demon lady to break this man's shoulder, which was perfect. He deserved it. Look, if Dea says I wasn't with her, then that means she has no alibi either. And she has a history with murder. I don't want to get her into any trouble. I say she was with me. It's on her for saying I wasn't. And hey, if Dea gets the rap for this, uh, maybe she'll need me to speak at the trial. Wait, you know what? I take back what I said. I was completely alone. <laughs> Let her come crawling back. I suppose a judge could strike testimony from the record. But this isn't a court case. You're just talking to two guys. Two guys who know that you and Deleuze have an alibi. You're no fun. I think we're done here. Hmm. All right, we gotta talk to Goose again. Into the bathroom we go, because apparently Goose just likes the bathroom. Oh, I keep forgetting to close the door. Well, let's get this over with. It's uh really cramped in here, please leave. Well, I'm not sure how to get Goose to disclose anything. We can't even go in here. I suppose we could try the kitchen again, but I don't know what good that would do. Come to bother me again, I see. Why would someone burn her script to the play? What a horrible thing to do! I had no idea it was burned! She'd been working on it tirelessly. Well, it's almost completely gone. I doubt anyone could use it. I'm sorry. At least her legacy can continue. Even if all her notes are gone, I have to go back to the originally published version. I'll make sure that the show goes on. After all, the creative voice behind Constance Little Bear Mysteries has not entirely departed. As her editor, I can continue the stories for her. I came in here to start making notes right away. It felt like the only way I could respect what she's leaving behind. We'll let you get back to it then. I'm not sure where else to go. We did the kitchen, we did the dining room, we did the parlor, we did the music room. There's just the office. Oh, there's this guy. What are you doing here? Snooping. You shouldn't. He gave up. May we ask you a few questions? By all means. Where were you when Belle was murdered? I was checking on Goose. They're usually real tough, so I was surprised they were sick. So you've met them before this? I guess the cat is out of the bag on that. Such an adorable detective, aren't you? He leaned a bit closer to Faraday with a wink. Faraday blushed and stammered. Uh, yeah. So you know them. Why pretend not to? I'd rather come clean. I don't want to deal with getting a murder pinned on me. I'm a thief, not a murderer. I'm guessing here, but I feel like everyone we talk to is going to say they're not murderers. But at least one of them is a liar. As Goose, they'll back me up. Say I told you it's okay. Well, maybe that means we can talk to Goose. How did you find out about this party? We've been planning this for a while. We got four floor plans, got her to run into Goose. Whenever she decided to let them in would have been all the chance we needed. Why come steal something when you can't get out? 
That would have been exciting to deal with, but it wasn't something I planned for. This party just happened to be when she invited them, and I found a way to sneak myself in under the circumstances. I didn't know you would seal the place, though. There's no way to get out of here until morning. That was a bit of a hitch, but I'm sure I could have worked something else out. A challenge! It would have been fun! Did you like my trick with the lights? You really scared poor Clarice. No one got hurt. No one was supposed to get hurt, at least. I really don't know what went wrong. Interesting fellow, interesting story. Did you see anything suspicious? I really didn't. I wasn't paying, any, uh, paying attention to anything but the prize. The prize being... I just love demon sharks! I hate to break it to you, but there's no such thing as demon sharks. Don't tell Goose! You break their heart! I think we're finished talking to Lupine. Oh, I thought we could paw through Bill's notes and fill up on some fun stories. Come back if you change your mind. Bye for now, cuties! Hmm. Maybe we talk to Goose again. We are indeed back. You did, you did. How on earth do you keep forgetting to close the door? How many times must I disturb this, this person before they decide, yeah, it's time to close the damn door? Haven't you people ever heard of closing the goddamn door? No. Loved the cover? Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to hear it. Mm hmm. Okay. If he says it's okay. I do like their smile. I must say, I'm pretty keen on that smile of theirs. Lupine and I are partners. We work together to steal imps that belong to other people and give them back to their owners. I did steal this. Goose reached under their hat and held out a sharp-pointed object. You seem like you're smart enough to know this isn't a demon shark tooth. Yeah, but we didn't know what it actually was. It's someone's imp. They deserve it back. Maybe it's better if I take it and seal it up. No way. Goose pulled it away and put it back under their hat. You don't have the right to deprive someone of part of themselves. Maybe they got rid of it for a reason. No matter the reason, living with only part of yourself will always feel empty. Interesting stuff, interesting stuff. It's, uh, really cramped in here. Please leave. After everything we heard and saw, I'm pretty sure I know who killed Canterbury and Belle. Faraday nodded. Me too. Do you want to check your notes before making an accusation? Oh my, we're already on the accusation part. Well, goodness gracious. Because now would be a good time to do that. If I'm not checking them now, then I assure you I don't need to do it at all. Oh, wait, I would like to. Oh, we can, we can. Dano, oh, thank you for subscribing. Thanks, video game. Just what I wanted before bed. Existentialism. Thank you so much for becoming a VIP member of Ever Yours. I'll be sure to send your card in the mail. Dizzy, thank you so much. Oh, I really appreciate you grabbing a seat at the bar. Do let me know if I can get you anything. We're happy to serve you here at Ever Yours. Oh my, let's see.
Right, she was murdered, friends of the Fae. That's right. <laughs> you shut up, lazy shitbag. Oh, his, uh, his demon does like the sideburns too. What an honor! Happy to be a club member! Of course, of course! Uh, what kind of character impression can I do for you? Sipping on some lovely bone broth this evening. Let me know, Dano, and I will whip up a character impression just for you. Oh god, a Peter Griffin impression. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna say I'm oh this is bad. This is bad, but I I will just I'll just do my best. I didn't care for the Godfather. Nope, I I didn't get it. I thought it was long. I thought it was boring. I um, I didn't care. I didn't care, Lois. I did not. I did not think it was. Uh, I did not think it was good. <laughs> that is uh, that is the best Peter Griffin I can do. Melatonin. It makes me silly. La, I, I, oh my god, 10 out of 10. <laughs> oh, you flatter me, you flatter me, Dizzy Darling. I hope, Dano, that that was, um, everything you desired. I hope it was everything you needed in this trying melatonin-induced time. <laughs> Poor Belle, who got murdered. Hmm. The train one is great. Published her first story under a pen name and is deceased. And finds partner. Dea de Luz. <laughs> her imp caught. Uh, change her into locked spaces. Can get her into locked spaces. Finnabelle Evil Lab, she's going to make a killer, Duchess Baker. They both stole the tooth, but I don't think they would need to murder her for that. Hmm. Demons aren't just the big monsters that lurk in the woods or destroy small villages. Everyone might even have a really tiny demon running around hiding their keys or eating their socks. We humans contribute to them via negative emotions. The difference between a harmless or harmful demon is how powerful we let them get. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Or they can't feed off us? Capturing renegade or stray demons. You sailing alchemy. <clears throat> the professor's goal is for each person to have the option to seal their own demon deep within themselves. Already done this. <clears throat> Meeting went too well, they refused to treat the process as a medical procedure and rebranding demons. I'm not gonna lie to these assholes for money, screw this. What is this? Ah, that's it. Well, I suppose we have, we've got to go ahead and, and make a, make a judgment. Oh dear. 
It seems like we've done everything. I, I can't say for sure who it is. <clears throat> I would love to pin it on him. I hate him. She said she saw an imp running out, which means it could have been de loose. <sighs> but it was locked after, so that doesn't really make sense. And I don't think she can lock places, she unlocks them, so... Alright, are we comfortable blaming the actress? Does that sound good to everyone? We blame Myers for it? <clears throat> what say you all, do tell. Who do we think it is? Does anyone disagree? Does anyone have any others? Any other hints? Let's do it. Never can trust a professional liar. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Huh. <clears throat> well. Right, all right. We're going to guess. We're going to guess. Faraday and Harold managed to get everyone to gather in the parlor. The killer is Clarice Myers. She got caught snooping on the script and was so embarrassed in front of her idol. So you found me out! Clarice's face contorted and she gave her chilling villain laugh. Who but I, the Duchess herself, could have committed such a nefarious plot? But it petered out quickly into a very joyless frown. Honestly... I would never. <clears throat> How are we supposed to believe you when you put on that evil face? I just find strong characters comforting when I'm nervous. You see? You can never take down Duchess Baker! Myers put on a brave face, but after that moment... Refused to set aside her character. The others kept an eye on her until morning when the sun rose. When the seal of the mansion broke, the police were summoned. Arrived promptly, and as she was led away, Clarice Myers had a few genuine tears on her cheeks. Dr. Harold was never paid for the evening's proceedings, and Holly never quite managed to shake the feeling that they had made a dreadful error in judgment that day. Bad end. <clears throat> oh my, and I didn't even say it, but they do let you choose a different culprit. Well, we were wrong, we were wrong. Good gracious. A citizen not welcome in. Oh, salty ass wee, thank you so much for grabbing a seat at the bar. Let me know if I can get you anything. Very happy to have you here. Bad end only because she's so extra. I believe it, Dano, I believe it. I really thought she was the one. I really thought her crocodile tears would have me confused. And in the end, it was me second-guessing myself that was my downfall. But I'm so quick to forgive a pretty woman who cries. That got me into a lot of trouble in L.A. Noir, and I was too ready to overcorrect there. <clears throat> Am I might just choose her, then? I think it could have been... I think it could have been her. <clears throat> What's nice is I guess we can very easily just go through until we finally get it. She said she was alone at the time of the murder, and she could have easily broken into Belle's office, plus a prior offense. Good luck backing any of that up. I said before, she was with me. Merrick, I don't need your help. Daya turned to the rest of the group and put out her hands. I guess you're going to have to tie me up until morning. Why would we tie you up? You're not resisting. You're not exactly a threat. Or am I? Who knows what I could be capable of? I better get me tied up nice and tight. Oh, I feel like she's into that. 
kept an eye on her until morning. When the sun rose, the seal mansion broke. They arrived promptly and treated the suspect with considerably more respect than any of the other guests. Well, of course I'd be delighted to come with you, officers. I'm sure we can clear up this little misunderstanding. Oh, and by the way, did my little donation to the policeman's ball go through all right? I'm very much looking forward to making another next year, so long as nothing might happen to get in the way of it. Aha, <clears throat> uh -huh, they cleared her within a week, huh? And Harold was made the prime suspect. There wasn't enough evidence to convince him he was treated to a lifetime of surveillance and harassment. On the rare occasions he left home. Bad end. We can't even go back and keep looking for clues. I, I mean, there really wasn't any other room to go through. I'm very confused. Does anyone else think they might know who it could be? Hmm. I'll give you some time. Please think, my lovelies. What on earth? My, my, my. No clue, but I came in late? Faraday did it. Faraday's not even on the list of suspects. Hmm. And my brain is squishy and frail. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder. Exactly, if he's not on the list of suspects, a perfect murder. Ah, I see what you're saying. Is there any way? <clears throat> no. He's the only- or they are the only one that smile. Goose is the only one that smiles when about to be picked. Hmm. Who stands to gain anything by her death? Who would have killed the other woman at the publishing company? And why? <clears throat> I think everyone has a slight motive. It's hard. Hard to know. You know, let's just blame Noah because I like the idea of him being behind bars, even if I'm wrong. <clears throat> A military man, but he just seems to have anger issues and is kind of skeevy. Exactly. I don't think that he did it this time, but I believe he did it sometime to someone. What a shame that he has no alibi for the time of the murder. Dea, you were with me the whole time. That's not how I remember it. It's a shame, really. If he was a reliable type of guy, the type of guy to sign divorce papers, maybe I could vouch for his character. But as it stands, I just can't say. This isn't funny. I mean, it is kind of funny. Pretty objectively. Dea. Oh my. You will cease this nonsense right now. Oh no. I'll do whatever you want. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh man, get out of here with that. Who would be scared of a big temper tantrum baby like you? Noak tried to argue, but Deleuze continued to mock him. Soon, nobody was all that scared of him. Deleuze even provided a significant length of rope to keep him restrained until morning. And the police were summoned. Noak put on a stern face. Dr. Harold was never paid for the evening's proceedings. And Holly Faraday was never quite convinced they had chosen the right culprit. But he wasn't overly motivated to clear Noak's name, either. Bad end. Kinda. <clears throat> we can't even choose a book from here. Should we go down the list? I, I feel sort of sad. A little bit sad that we can't keep going. Maybe Faraday is just being too picky. 
That could be, that could be. What more do you want? Maybe he'll just never be satisfied with himself. Should we blame the Fae? At this point, to be quite honest, I don't have a better list of suspects. I don't have a better idea, so... Maybe we just blame the Fae. What would Phoenix Wright do? He'd look at his notes, probably. He'd look at the evidence present, but um, unfortunately... I just don't have anything. But this person's smiling. I, I feel like it could be Goose, but I, I don't know that Goose would need to. I mean, Goose doesn't kill for fun. They kill for business. And the thing is, they were paid to be there. Ah, thanks for grabbing a drink at the bar. You know, I don't see a reason why Goose would want to kill the person that's going to pay them. As research material. I guess let's just go down the list. I, d I don't have a better option. Does anyone else have a suspect? Does anyone else have someone they think does it? I'm all ears, if so. The two I thought we already picked will shit. Piss and shit. Alright, at this point, I think we're just gonna have to click. We're just gonna have to do some clicking. The actress and the moody man. Indeed. Hmm. I'm gonna wait until this Proposed ad break is over, and then we will choose the Fae. <clears throat> he looks so shocked. So shocked he could possibly be the culprit. Mm-hmm. -hmm. All right, four more seconds and we're in business. The only obvious choice is lupin. Lupine flowers. Hurtful! You're pinning it on me just because I'm an enigmatic stranger, one who wasn't invited, and perhaps I do have the ability to do a thing or two with spontaneous fire. The body was burned in her office, and you were even hanging out there at the scene of the crime. I would never. I'm a gentleman. Maybe a bit curious and nosy gentleman, but a gentleman nonetheless. Nothing about that sounds like a gentleman. Neither does stealing from Belle. What? That's definitely gentlemanly. I'm a gentleman thief. I sent a note covering this. Why did no one see my note? Ah. And he even had an accomplice, Goose Downey. Guilty as charged. Not cool, Goosey. Not cool. I'll take that item you stole. Vance held out her hand and took the demon shark tooth from Goose, who surrendered it willingly. The group managed to get the two thieves tied to chairs, but when the sun rose and the seal in the mansion broke, both of them managed to slip their bonds and escape before the police were summoned. The demon shark tooth went missing yet again. This escape was very much to the dismay of the zealous man in a trench coat who showed up just as quickly as a police force. Both culprits were wanted, and these crimes were added to the many they were already accused of. Harold was never paid. Faraday never managed to shake the feeling. They had made a dreadful error in judgment. Then Vance. Vance is the only person, perhaps, who stands to gain anything. Ha! 
I mean, it's pretty obviously. Harold put a finger to his lips, then whispered, Shh, wait a moment. He then leaned in and quietly continued. I'm certain that we're on the same page, but let us proceed with caution. We cannot tell where exactly the rented imps may be. We cannot allow them to suspect that we think it is. He mouthed the word. Bats. Holly nodded and then stated loudly, since all of you said it wasn't you, it must have been a suicide. No murders in either case. Mystery solved, as far as I'm concerned. He tilted his glasses down so that Harold could see his eyes and gave a big wink. Harold did his best to act annoyed by this, instead of incredibly charmed. Look at Harold's little smile. Look at Harold's sweet smile. Oh, that's cute. That's very cute. They headed towards the kitchen, but instead could hear music towards the music room. Movement. When the two men arrived at the music room, they found Vance there, as well as Lupine and Goose. Hold it right there. Lupine gave him a cheeky grin. We are nosy tonight, aren't we? Faraday clenched his hands into fists. Despicable! You were in cahoots with her the whole time. I guess there's no point in hiding it after all. Goose withdrew the demon shark tooth from underneath their hat and handed it off to Vance. Wahahaha! <laughs> the great thief has successfully finished another heist! You said you were a thief, not a murderer! Murderer? Lupine's eyes flitted from Faraday to Vance to the tooth in her hands. I see. Goose, we messed up big time. If I hadn't been so worried about your health, I would have noticed sooner. What's all this racket? They loose entered, quickly followed by Noah and Myers. Goose motioned towards Vance. She's... Faraday lost his patience. Yes, of course she's the killer! Myers shook her head. No! That can't be true! Miss Vance and Miss Bell have been friends ever since Miss Bell wrote her first Constance Little Bear mystery! Harold withdrew a sheath of papers. My apologies, madam, but not a single thing you've said is correct. Miss Vance was not Bell's friend, and Bernadette Bell did not write the first Constance Little Bear mystery! What? What?! Oh my... Oh my... When Belle gave Miss Myers her autograph, she signed it in blue ink. The same blue ink that she claimed to have used to write all her stories. But... <coughs> but this first draft is written in black ink. with spidery handwriting that differs significantly from the rest of Bell's notes. Spidery handwriting is not, however, only to be found on the first draft. It can also be found... Faraday snatched a small notebook out of Vance's hands and held it open to show the assembled onlookers. In Vance's personal notebook! Not a word if it is true! This is just a distraction! He's throwing accusations around in order to confuse you all! None of you can trust such a vile man, nor his associate. Hey, I could have sworn I heard you mention that you were the one who recommended Ludicale to Belle. I mean, Ludicale's not a guy I would invite to a party either, but if I was looking for someone shady to take the blame, plenty of people would assume he did it. She invited me too. She said that Belle had stolen her imp and she needed our help getting it back. She was supposed to give Belle our calling card, so that Belle would know we were stopping by. Why did she even need our help? Miss Vance, you could have strolled in and asked for her impact at any time. Boss, it was a frame-up. Oh! She must have figured. If Ludicale didn't take the fall, there'd be two more outlaws as backups. Me? 
I'm never someone's backup. I never play less than center stage. All that matters is she had plenty of Patsy shielding her for suspicion. Methinks thou dost protest too much, Vance. I dare say, Dano, I dare say. It's so cruel. This is mere conjecture, nothing more. How on earth could I have killed Belle? As you've so callously established. She gestured to a hole in her neck. I have no imp of my own. Not true. You vile thing, I'm not lying. I haven't published a book in years. I was forced to sell my imp. You didn't have your imp. You had several rented imps. As you all know, Vance made our dinner tonight using one of the cooking imps that makes a flame hot enough to char a person alive. One that is, I might add, more than big enough to hold a human body and soundproof enough to smother a tea kettle screech. Let alone the last cries of Poor Belle. And she's had control over them in the past as well, because she said Belle would rent these imps from the same people often. She used a cooking imp to kill Belle in her office, then assuming that the imp couldn't move with poor Belle inside, Vance put Belle's body on the same cart she used to serve dinner, the one with the ivy cloth. She carted Belle's body to the basement, dumped her into the furnace, threw the incriminating cloth in after her, and then screamed, alerting the rest of us. You did it! Admit it! Wow, that was quite the conjecture. Quite the conjecture. I'm stunned that a man like you... Oh, that's a smile I don't want to see was competent enough to put this all together. But solving this only means you've doomed everyone here. So fine, what does it matter? I wrote the first Constance Little Bear mystery. It feels so good to say it. I published it under a pseudonym, knowing that the public would never accept it from me. Me? A respectable writer of beloved fairy tales, writing tales of blood. It would sully my reputation. The story did modestly. Many readers enjoyed it, including Bernadette Bell. The little upstart. She was a little nothing writer who loved my story and confided her esteem, not knowing that I was the writer. I told her my secret, and she was so excited. She asked to assist me in continuing the series. I even allowed her a small percentage of the earnings. But as we published more and more, sometimes trading off submissions, it became apparent that the public preferred her stories. So I let her write. More and more. But she had the gall to suggest that she deserved more of the profits. She even confided in her nosy little friend, Gareth Canterbury. Canterbury said it was wrong for Belle to write so much and for me to get all the profits. As though the series would exist without me. I, the creator of the series, was falling deeper into obscurity. A certain standard of living is expected of an authoress of my esteem. I had to sell my imp, my creative drive, to keep up appearances. I haven't been motivated to write a single page since. She thumped at the hole in her neck. It was smaller than Goose's and thus easy to mistake her an earring. I had all but given up on ever seeing my creativity or my glory days ever again. But wouldn't you know? Unwittingly, Belle bought my imp! And now there was going to be a stage adaption of the first story. My story. But the director and Belle insisted on having Belle rewrite it. That was really the final straw. So I dealt with Canterbury. 
that she knew our secret, and then I dealt with Belle. And now, I don't need a single thing in this house to survive. And fire has really done me quite a few favors lately. Why not one more? The oven imp stood in the doorway, flame and iron bearing the only exit. Ah. The rental imp just became unstable. It lost control and burned the whole mansion down. And tragically, none of you made it out. A shame we didn't catch that it was unstable when it killed Canterbury. What a shame, too, that I will have to rewrite that script myself. Now that Belle's gone. But it will tie the whole narrative up neatly. An unhinged imp. An unfortunate fire. But no one to blame. And the public loves a neat and tidy story. The guests were at a loss for words. Lupine whistled in admiration. Lady, that is a wild story, sure. But you're forgetting one thing. We're not going to stand around and let you kill us. Goosey, get her! Goose drew a gun from their side and held it level at Vance. You seem to be forgetting about the second imp, which is just as dangerous! <gasps> the razor-thin knife imp sliced deeply through Goose's hand, and they recoiled, dropping the gun, clutching the wound. Oh my. Well, this is bad. This is very, very bad. Vance laughed and held her own imp aloft. First, I shall reclaim my creative drive. Then, I will claim your lives. And then, I will reclaim my career. Harold felt his stomach lurch. It wasn't the mealy, self-obsessed fear of social discomfort this time, but a sudden terror for the safety of every person he locked inside the house. Wait! When we entered the house, Belle mentioned that she hadn't been feeling well, and when Goose stole the imp, Belle was full of energy. Well, Goose was suddenly stricken ill. That imp is dangerously full of spite and envy. That must have been what made Belle and Goose sick. If you return it to yourself right now, you might not be able to withstand it. Vance laughed. Don't be absurd. I have it back where it belongs, and not you, nor anyone else will be able to take it from me. Once I have my creative drive back, I will be returned to the height of my writing ability. How could I, the greatest author of the modern era, be envious of anyone else? And with that, Vance lined the thin spike up against the hole under her ear and drove it straight into her neck. With it reunited to her, she seemed to lose her balance and crumple to her knees. I forgot how this used to feel. I tried to warn you. Imps are complicated, and yours is filled with so much envy it could poison anyone. But this should be all I needed, to have the same creative drive Belle had. Vance moaned, trying to focus enough to direct the rental imps in her defense. She probably had no idea this thing was even yours. The cabinet was mostly just fake junk. She probably would have gotten rid of it if she knew it was making her sick. Dea, help me tie her up. What, you just assume I have ropes on me? I mean, I do, but that's a rude thing to just assume. An hour later, the sun began to rise over Belle's mansion. Lupine and Goose were the first to make a swift exit out of the windows, without so much as a farewell. The other guests left more conventionally. If you can call heading home after harassment for answers by belligerent police conventional. The police cupped Vance and agreed to bring her in, a more thorough check of all the facts. 
she was led past Harold and Faraday, she chuckled. You think this was a loss for me? But even if they take me in for a while, I'll still come out on top. Without Belle's notes, who do you think they'll be turning to to write that script? Or are they going to consult about the direction of the series? Who will write the next story? Soon everyone will know that I wrote the first story. Full creative control. It's my series now. The hater energy emanating from Vance could power a nuclear submarine. I truly agree. I truly agree. The pair watched her go, her gleeful laugh fading away as she was taken out the door. Indeed, Sir Pistentia, it's a dark day, a dark, disgusting, sad day. That sounds about right for the level of justice in this city. Disgusting. If the chain does publish the next story, I'm sure as hell not going to read it. While Harold gathered up his things, Faraday slumped over on the couch. Hey, next time you're going to a party, remind me that I hate them. How about I remind you of this? Nobody invited you in the first place? Ugh! Faraday rolled over. Do you at least still have a solicitor? Some kind of lawyer? There's gotta be something else we can do so that Vance doesn't get our way. Oh, sure. I'll just hire a lawyer to help Belle's memory with all the money she didn't pay us with the, for this evening. Faraday pressed his face into the cushions. We could pull a lupine and help ourselves to the payment, Harold sighed. We could probably get away with it, but it just wouldn't feel right, even... I have to get my script back from where I hid it. I can't stop working even if I'm dead or I work too hard for this all to be for nothing. Maybe I work too hard for this all to be nothing. Harold dropped his bag and clutched at his arm, hanging off his sleeve. Was Bernadette Bell's imp? You little rascal! When I finish finding that script, I'm gonna seal you away! Wait. What? Harold opened up his bag and dangled the little thing above it. Nothing. It's simply Bell's imp again. It got me with one of those accursed jabs. No, before that, you said Bell's script? Yes, it's trying to get me to... Harold stopped, and the imp hopped up onto his arm. It gave a questioning look. Oh! I think I understand. Belle's imp was made from her desire to continue working. Belle was obsessed with finishing her script when she died. And without Belle around, it seems to need to compel someone else to complete the job. The imp hopped a little, seeming to reach for his hand. Harold lifted a finger and without a second thought, he pressed his fingertip down against one of the sharp spines. Hmm. I don't know that it matters which one we do, but let's do that. Would I have hidden a script in the office? Sure, let's see. Harold was halfway out the door before Faraday could opt his feet and follow. The imp led them upstairs to Belle's office. Moving his sore hand along the side of the desk, Harry felt around and found a secret compartment. It slid open with little resistance. They pulled out a large document, all handwritten in blue ink. Faraday gripped Harold's shoulder. She must have suspected something. Does it look like it's usable? Faraday flipped through it carefully. He was quiet for a time, taking it in. Holly! This rewrite fixes all of Vance's mistakes in the first story. I'm sure people are going to like it. Vance is probably going to scream her head off when she finds out. Ha <laughs> ha! Serves her right! I can't believe something good finally happened tonight. We can give this to Myers and the director and everything will- Shush! I'm reading! 
Three months later, in Harold's stray, imp-infested home, Harold and Faraday were dressed in their best yet again. Faraday looked down at the two tickets in his hand. Oh, that stress and hard work. She didn't even bother to send us free tickets. At least we managed to get enough money for them. You think you can handle this? It's the premiere, so there are going to be a lot of notable people around. For one night, I promise to ignore them all. Faraday wasn't sure that Harold could keep to that promise, but he appreciated the effort. You know, I heard an imp lost control in the theater last month. It'd be just our luck to run into that on our one night out. <sighs> I'm going back to bed. Harold turned around and plodded away. Like hell you are. Get back here. I'm letting my legs go limp. <laughs> I'll drag you if I have to, you lousy bastard. I earned this damn date. Oh, a date is it? A date. The true end! The true end! Wow, and they still didn't make any money? That's kind of sad. Oh, well, that was pretty fun. That was pretty fun. I liked it. I think perhaps if I had played it in one fell swoop, maybe I would have picked up more on the fact that she had very murderous imps. Because it seemed off. It seemed a little off, but I simply didn't remember that much. And the blue ink versus the black ink, they even mentioned her spidery handwriting. I'd plumb forgotten. Well, that was great and fun. I'm not sure quite yet if I'm going to end stream or start something else, but I must use the little lady's room. So we're going to BRB, and then I'll be back with you in a jiffy. Don't go anywhere!
All right, and we're back. That was a good time. I really enjoyed that. I think, hmm. Hydrate? Well, thank you. Don't mind if I do. I could use a hydrate. Twas not a poo, scrunt. Goodness gracious. It was the result of many liquids in a short amount of time. It happens. <clears throat> well, what are my lovelies in the mood for? Do I know how to start a poll? I wonder. It looks like an ad has happened. Maybe that will give me time to figure it out. Let's see. <clears throat> what does this do? Chat settings? What? I don't know how to do a poll. Slash poll? Oh, really? <clears throat> oh. Did that work? It did! Thank you so much! <clears throat> All right, let's see. We could do a little Professor Layton, or if you all are feeling spooky visual novel, we could do spooky visual novel. Stopped. Good, and it's up there. So please do tell me. What do you think? <clears throat> do you have any more games from the person who did Once Upon a Windswept Night? I do. I do. I don't believe there's any choices, but I actually do have one. Oh, that could have been a third choice. Damn it. All right, well, we'll see. We'll see if Visual Novel takes the lead or Professor Layton. We get to Visual Novel. Maybe then I'll do a second poll about which visual novel. We could do an Ebi Hime visual novel, or we could do the ta peculiar tales from the something pavilion. And we'll see, we'll see. <clears throat> when it comes to peculiar tales... Oh, what is it? Mm -hmm. Of Mid Lake Pavilion. I believe they can be done. Oh, spooky visual novel. All right, all right. Well, that's great. Now let's, uh, let's do it again. Slash poll. Thank you for that, by the way. I really appreciate it. Thanks for letting me know. Which visual novel? Haunted lesbians. Random spooky tale. I think we could get through a whole tale from Peculiar Tales of Mid Lake Pavilion. We might have to stop at Rituals in the Dark. Rituals in the Dark is the haunted lesbian one. I'm not sure how long that is. You know what? I could see. I could simply look. Where is it? Da -da -da. Hmm. Oh, shit, what is it called? Rituals in the Dark. Rituals in the Dark. Where are you? There we are. Store page. Wow, we had one for haunted lesbians and one for random spooky tale. Well, that's not really much of a tiebreaker at all. It seems you guys will be pretty pleased either way. 
It's around three to four hours of reading. So maybe for now, we'll just do one little spooky tale. One peculiar tale, as it were. <clears throat> I believe that should be a lot shorter. I think you also get voices, which is kind of fun. Now then, let's get this set up properly, shall we? I believe that's the whole window. And it is very dark. It's just very, very dark. <clears> hmm. <throat> Maybe we'll go back then. No? I see. We'll start. Ghost Pagoda. Why don't we do that? Treasures from the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom are buried under a mysterious tower. The hero Kitaro strayed into the Ghost Pagoda by chance. Haunted by the ghost, he was saved by a Taoist priestess at a critical moment. But since then, he could see things that should not exist in this world. The truth of this curse is... Oh, you know what? I'll let you all choose. Could do the mirror room. The hero lived in the murder room because of a lack of money. A rainy night and his colleague roommate came to spend the night. Mirror illusion, inner entanglement. Unpleasant memories of the past gradually make the atmosphere strange. Xiangxi Bridge. An additional story, specifically designed for you. An extra chapter. The story takes place in Pingjiang Road, the ancient city of Gusu, telling the first encounter between popular heroine Jin Liu and Duan Mu Fei. Paradisial water town, warm stories, healing your heart. That doesn't sound spooky, that sounds nice. Midsummer Night. I, who was confused about the future, strayed away from parents who kept arguing and wandering on the streets all day. Should have taken the last subway that day and went home as usual and unexpectedly. I encountered an unexpected accident. Unexpectedly, of course. On the last midsummer night of high school, the reunion of my of the guy and the girl. The observed future. And then last subway? Or is that the same? Oh, I just accidentally clicked it. Escape. Main menu. Take me back. Yes, yes. What is a rat man? So that is one. A hero wakes up to find himself imprisoned in a dark iron box. With a splitting headache, he received a phone call. Call and get two million yuan in half an hour, or get crushed to death. He was told so. He picks up the phone and starts his own journey to survive. So what do we think? Man trapped in a box who might die? A haunted pagoda where a man sees more than he bargained for? A room where unpleasant memories of the past gradually make his college roommate uncomfortable. 
Or a pleasant story about a bridge? Whatever, these polls last one singular minute. Let's do it. Crush to death. Bad pagoda. Bad times after. Oops. I'm gonna say bad pagoda, bad times. Uncomfortable roommate. Or, nice bridge. I have played the rat man myself. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. It is spooky. It is creepy. I am very uncomfortable with uh, being trapped in small places. <laughs> So I may not be super excited to play it again, but I do know how to get us out of there. I do know how to get us out of there. I feel like I've been drinking enough at least to be brave tonight and try something scary that I've not tried before. When do I believe is just us meeting someone on the Yes, so the idea is that you are visiting this beautiful old inn and you're resting. Then you decide to go to this lovely pavilion at night. Bad pagoda, bad times? All right, I guess it's the ghost pagoda for us. A brand new story. I don't know what happens here. I hope I remain brave enough. That doesn't sound like Kitaro, but all right. <clears> to <throat> you, the girl sitting next to me started to talk to me shortly after the morning reading began. The early morning sun shined in through the windows. Watching the swaying shadow of the trees, I only felt hazy and completely ignored her words. <laughs> Doesn't it sound fun to get a million dollars under a ghost pagoda? <laughs> Yeah, it's nice to have dreams in a shitty world, isn't it? You didn't listen at all. <laughs> wow, this man doesn't seem to really uh want to give much effort into this girl's conversation, does he? But Not listening at all. I often feel uneasy, but I can't put my finger on the source, and today the sunnies is especially strong. I was responding to Chi Yue perfunctorily while looking out the window, trying to get peace from the familiar scenery and trace the source of this anxiety. Goo goo? Ah, he must be hungry. <laughs> Ah, he's got to travel a long distance. That's why I can't get food. But she gave me cookies. A cute girl giving us cookies? Handmade cookies? Are you kidding me? Alright, this was a good story. This was a good choice. Good job, good job. Yes, but I'm excited. Well, as long as you promise we're whispering, that doesn't sound like whispering. Oh, yes? Jeez. Why should I be watching you? Oh my. He seems a little grumpy, doesn't he? That sounds good. Woo Senior High School, now we know. Hmm.
Ah, a giant in the field of archaeology funded the school. His love for the unknown and the mysterious things passed on to us students. Even in the school newspaper, the topics are mostly about these cases. Yeah, where would we find this ghost pagoda? Oh, you pass it every day, huh? And Bell Pagoda. Square Pagoda, Bell Pagoda, Ghost Pagoda, Everything Pagoda. I have not heard of the... Xiaocheng? Li Xiaocheng. Li Xiaocheng. I thought you said he was a general. Did I just misread that? Ah. So it is. <laughs> hmm. Big man, huh? Oh, they were crushed, huh, by the Qing army. Only one small window. Who still looks out of that one small window? No, I have only just now discovered about this square pagoda. A disapproving finger at me. Now, now, Vanille, your Chinese history lessons are starkly disappointing. I'm sorry. I feel like the music got so loud and her voice got so quiet. Uh-oh. Well, now the whole class is focused on her. Now we're in trouble. Uh oh. Why is he staring at me like that? A gentleman like me should stand out to help to you. Cover up the embarrassment. Oh, I do get some choices. Look at that. How should we do it? Should we imitate anime characters? Internet jokes? Or sing Sujo Pintan? Anyone have any idea what they'd like to do? I think imitating. Oops. Yes, I, I think imitating an anime character might be fun. Sing, you're good at that. All right, we will stand up and sing Sujo Pintan. to say that to me uh, she does not even care that I saved her the embarrassment I cannot help reciting a poem on my way from school shall I compare thee to an autumn's day what's the next line Do you? A hand bang on my head. That's not very nice. Uh oh. <laughs> wow, I'm just really making friends, aren't I? <clears throat> I embarrassed you. I'm the one who just sang an old person song. Yeah, explain yourself. Wow, look at that eye. Yeah, you? Oh, was that a clown horn? My goodness. 
Oh, he's mad. Wow, he's going to take my things? He's just going to steal my things? He's a terrible monitor. How rude, how bad. Oh dear. Wow, he really just stole it forever. It's not even like he was teasing me. He, he just... He just took it and was gone with the wind. Oh, Ji Yun stopped. He circled into the woods of the school and rode along the dirt road until I could not see his back. The calves were very sore and swollen, and even my breathing became fast. I held up my shoulder bag and looked at my mess with a satisfied expression. <coughs> you give it back to me? Threw my bag over the wall behind him. <laughs> Wow, he took us right to the ghost pagoda, just like we had been talking about. How serendipitous. The smoke gradually cleared, and a strange and ominous building emerged in front of my eyes. That's exactly what Chi Yue Yue said, the ghost pagoda. I had come to the pagoda before I knew it. Trouble now. The pagoda was surrounded by high walls, and the only gate was closed all the time. There's no way for me to enter, unless I had wings. It's impossible to get in there. Find the way by yourself. He pedaled his bicycle briskly, humming a little song, and left here along the way he came. Why is he doing this to me? Did I do anything wrong? Is this a so-called urban to rural campus bully? If I can't get in and find the bag, I can't finish the homework on time. My head teacher, who teaches Chinese, is so bad, oh, so bad-tempered, that I can't imagine the consequences of not handing in my homework. Tell her my homework was thrown away by the monitor? No, she won't believe me. She would only defend the monitor she chose. All I can do is buy a bulletproof vest and wear it tomorrow. I don't want to get into trouble so early in the semester. I ponder these questions and search for an entrance along the wall. After going all the way around, I came to the main entrance of the outer court. What came into the view was an unnerving Chinese wooden door, overgrown with weeds, and it looks like it hasn't been taken care of for a long time. What is this? Taped to the wooden door were two sheets of yellow paper with words I couldn't read, written in scarlet paint. When I touched the paper, I felt a cold sensation from my fingertips to my whole body. I gently pushed the door and it opened a crack. Through the crack, I vaguely saw the scene of the other side. Ooh, that spooked me. Is anyone there? What? 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 What do you mean a lanky figure loitered past in sight? Is that the pagoda keeper or someone? Maybe he can get me my shoulder bag, I thought aloud. Can I trouble you? But the man was unmoved, and I thought it wasn't loud enough. So I shouted inside again from the door. Oh, why? Why would you shout that? Why? If he... No! No! Ah. Oh god, oh god. <coughs> ah! Oh. <clears throat> That's fine. As a result, when I leaned on the door, I accidentally knocked the door open and the attached paper was torn from the middle. Oh my, the hell? The door wasn't locked. The paper was torn off the door. Is that okay? <clears throat> oh god. I guess it's just a sign of no entry or something. <gasps> oh, it's a sky. As I turned to the courtyard, the figure I'd seen disappeared mysteriously. At the same time, under the solemn sky, the long shadow of trees in the distance were heard the whirling sound of being blown by the wind. Are you playing this game while alone at home at night? Yes. Yes. I mean, I have the rest of my two beers here. We're almost down to one beer, but... I think that will carry us through the story. <coughs> what, 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 Oh. That was just a circle. 
Oh my! Is that a lady with a sword on her back? Should I be turned on or scared? Should I be turned on or scared? Am I going to date or die? Explain yourself! Talisman. Somebody ripped it up. It's troublesome. Did I do that? Both is good. Oh, the footsteps. The mysterious footsteps with no one there. Things didn't go well, and my shoulder bag was nowhere to be seen. It would have been nice if I had a flashlight, but now I can just search blindly in the grass. <coughs> Both is good. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Oh no. It was getting dark, and if I kept it up, I wouldn't be able to get out of the school. I wouldn't be able to get out of the school. I'm not in school. I'm in the ghost pagoda. What? I don't think that's quite right. No, I live alone anyway, and comparing to not getting out of school, I'm afraid I'll be killed by the bugs here. So both he and I are alone, wandering this world together. At this time, I sensed something was wrong, so I looked back at the courtyard, and as far as the eye could see, there was nothing but weeds and mosquitoes. There must be something wrong. What was it? The cold wind blew across the courtyard, the heavy smoke blowing and a faint burnt smell lingering on my nose for a long time. I was choked and coughed and looked down to see the ground covered by a layer of black ashes. It's like being burned by something. Then I noticed a strange track on the ground in the distance. Are they my footprints? But I've never been there before. There were no footprints there before and I didn't walk through it, which means... Ah! <clears throat> I heard a rustling over there. Just as I was confused, more footprints appeared. There's nothing on it, but footprints appeared out of thin air. And the footprints were accelerating towards me. I don't like that. I don't like that. My legs were shaking and my body instinctively backed away. Who? Who's that? The footprints continued to approach me in an unusual manner. And there was no place to hide. I had to hide behind the grass. Ooh, ooh. There's something. Something supernatural. Yeah, I fucking bet. We're in the ghost pagoda. What did you think? You were gonna find the natural phenomenon? Something normal. A human advanced at the human pagoda. <coughs> I held my breath, clasped my hands, and prayed wildly. But as an atheist, I had no idea which god to rely on when confronted with this strange phenomenon. I do feel that. Footprints didn't seem to increase any further. Did that thing go away? Just as I thought so, a rustling sound came from behind. Oh no, oh no. Ah! Ah! Bitch, 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 no! Ah! <clears throat> a pair of hands stretched out behind my back and twisted around my neck like a snake. The person behind me smoke, spoke vaguely in my ears. His mouth seemed to contain a lot of stones. Each strain to collapse a syllable will make a creaking sound. The words were not long, but I feel like it had been a few centuries. He let go of me after he finished his words, but I knew he didn't leave and seemed to be waiting for something. Prayed wildly, wildly indeed. Wildly with nowhere to go. I had to finish that beer if I'm gonna have someone's hands snaked around my neck. And not even consensually, just some weird ghost. Terrible. I had a hunch that if I respond to him, my hitherto stable life would suddenly go out of order or I would be plunged into another unknown world. So instead of looking back, I got up and ran towards the gate. But I did not find the gate, the opposite of the ghost pagoda, his pale wall. How the hell did I get in? 
I cannot get it at all. I slumped to the ground and looked at the ghost pagoda in front of me. Well, hello, Sonic. Welcome in. We are trapped in a ghost pagoda. This crazy ghost with terrible footprints and no body came up behind me and wrapped their hands around my neck. In the moonlight, the bronze bell on the top of the ghost pagoda coldly looked down at me as an intruder. Well, how rude of that bronze bell! I just wanted my homework, damn it! The bell rang suddenly, and the echoes overlapped each other like a group of ghosts vying to come to me and tell their stories. I don't know that I want to hear their stories. Well, I got something good to tell you. Incredible. I was shocked by my thoughts. Just when I was close to just Come here. I? A woman's voice came from the air. Who was speaking? <laughs> Close your eyes and come inside one sing pavilion. Go into the ghost pagoda? Fine. I have no choice. I tried to stand up and following the woman's words with my eyes closed, slowly walked towards the direction of one sing pavilion. As I neared the steps, something touched my cheek and I heard the sound of heavy, clammy breathing. I just really hope that you all appreciate that I am wearing headphones for this. And that felt like that was right in my ear. Did you all hear the terrible, heavy, clammy breathing? Because that was right in my ear. Oh my god. Ah! The creaking sound became faster and thanks to this, his words were much clearer than before. Do not forget. Do not forget? Forget what? Leaving aside the weird content, it seems that he is more like the drowning man who grabbed the straw for life than me. Soon I couldn't even think about this. It was right next to me. Don't open your eyes. I decided to follow her advice and keep my eyes closed no matter what happened. Honestly, absolutely. If a woman tells me that I need to come forward and keep my eyes closed, I'm listening to her. I'll be honest, I won't listen to a man. If a woman tells me that's what I have to do, I'm doing it. I trust her. <clears throat> oh, a toast, come pie, cheers, salute. I have won the Pinball League Final. First place in Group B. Looking forward to the next league? Well, all right, I am happy to cheers to that. Congratulations, Sonic! First place in Group B and looking forward to the next league. Cheers! Come by! Link. Whew. And I guess in China, it's Come Bay. You get that one for extra. <clears throat> if I open my eyes, what would I see? Nothing good. Nothing good. Anything that doesn't belong to this world? Obviously. It's only a short distance, but I seem to have walked for a long time. Oh no. Just as I hit the door of the ghost pagoda, it was opened by someone from the inside, and a pair of hands reached out to drag me inside. Hola. Now you can open your eyes. Must I? The interior of the ghost pagoda. Also, where is Amaretto? Oh, indeed, indeed. Amaretto, my darling, come out, come out. Wherever you may be. Where is that precious girl? Oh, there she is. Amaretto, say hi. Say hi, my lovely. Thank you, thank you for calling out my darling, dear girl. Maybe she'll give me a little extra courage in this trying time. <clears throat> I sat down with relief, my heart still pounding. There was a smell of rotten wood in the air, maybe because it had not been repaired for so long. I smell carefully, there's still a faint sulfur mixed in it. Wood and sulfur. 
This is an extremely dangerous combination. Somehow it's a very nost ah! nostalgic smell. I? I got slapped by someone. So I looked up at the one who slapped me. It was a woman in a Taoist robe who was looking down at me with sharp eyes. Why did you, little bird, destroy my ashram? Feeling my cheek burning, I didn't know what to say, and after standing for a long time, I realized... Mom? What nonsense! Another slap in my face! I'm sorry. It's just that your appearance reminded me of my late mother, and I, I blurted it out in a hurry. <laughs> well... That's excusable, but I'm not yet married. Don't talk rudely again. Let's make this horror game a little better with a little song from our one and only Vanille. Oh, a serenade! All right, I will do my best. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> oh God, let's see. Ghost mom. Here and slapping me silly Wandering here in the dark Terrible ghost hands Try to hurt me Can I return to where I once started? Where is my school? If only I could return to that day When I was singing sweetly And the patrol stole my bag he wanted to hurt me bad Those were times that I would give anything If that was the one and only worry Now I'm in ghost land Please tell me, ghost mom can I return again? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that serenade. I hope that was a wonderful song and it was worth a thousand channel points. Thank you for being here. A thousand channel per points worth of time. That was beautiful, wonderful. <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm so glad. Oh, and boy, redeemed a slip into something comfy. Don't mind if I do. Oh, I could use a little comfort. I don't think we're in for a very good time. I got slapped by a woman who is not married, and I called her my mom, and that just can't bode well for me. I destroyed her lovely talisman, and I called her a married woman mother. That's not great. Not great for me. I'm not scoring many points. So I could use some cozy. Thank you. Thank you, Voya. It looks like we're about to hit an ad, so we'll just play until we have to stop. I hope everyone enjoyed my song. Thank you for listening. Can Taoist Priest get married? I saw her reach for a third slap, and I hurriedly covered my face with my hands. I was wrong. Please don't slap me again. Because the evil spirit has the ability to charm people. In order to prevent you from falling into the illusion, I have to slap you repeatedly. Isn't it your fetish or something? Ah! She suddenly slapped hard into my face and made my face burn. It was probably the most painful slap out of the three. Hola, is it really fine? Is it all good now? Are we all right? <clears throat> she declared at the end as breezily as a nurse after an injection. 
Well, as long as you feel good about everything, I suppose that's fine. It's you that tore the talisman up? You should highlight that song, because that was truly beautiful. Well, thank you, Sonic. Maybe I will after this. Maybe I should make a note of when I did this. Let's see. How long are we in for? How long have I been here? I don't know. Oh, 2 minutes 16 seconds. I'll just stick that in my Discord. Reminder, I have a Discord if any lovelies would like to join. You get to hear a little bit more about what Vanille's up to when she's not streaming. Aha, how fun, how fun. I wonder, I don't think I have a Discord command, but I'm going to try anyway. Oh my god, I'm so very sure that Senior Spicy Peen is the one that set this up. Because I sure as hell didn't. Anyway, join that Discord while we have to wait for these pre-roll ads. And then we will continue. <clears throat> Think I'll have a little, uh, little drinking break while we wait. A little water. Whew. And a little beer. Maybe it won't be too scary. Maybe we'll be all right. <clears throat> Maybe it'll all be okay. She is showing me the talisman that I fucked up. But to be honest, if all it takes is someone pressing on the door, is that truly my fault? Oh, and as for the beer, it is... Um, Champurado. Ale brewed with corn masa, cocoa powder, panela sugar, lactose, and cinnamon with vanilla added. I thought it was a very appropriate beer for Vanille, so why not? <clears throat> very tasty and not too heavy. All right, let's uh, let's continue with getting slapped by mommy. I mean, madam, lady. This is the parent child talisman. The child talisman is damaged. The parent talisman can immediately perceive it. The Discord invite is invalid? Well, that's embarrassing. I've got to fix that. I wonder if I can, oh, so very quickly, figure out my own Discord. <clears throat> invite people? Oh. This might be it. See if that works. See if that gets you where you're going. Is that your ticket? Is that your ticket in? That reveals all the answers? Anyway, I've got to see why, why little lady is mad at me. It works, thank you. Well, thank you for joining. It's not ordinary paper. Common people cannot tear up the talisman. Just to say, I have a gift? For destroying things? I have a gift for fucking up protective talismans that keep ghosts away from humans? That's the worst gift in the world. That's a curse. That's horrid. I don't want that. Oh, I don't seem to be gifted. Why is that hurtful? It's possible you've taken some magic potion or fushui beforehand. It sounds like fairy tale shit. Kong Chan looked at the talisman in her hand. I know her name is Kong Chan? When did I learn her name was Kong Chan? She didn't tell me. Oh, it's a thunder and fire curse, and the parent talisman is written with an inscription to detonate the curse. 
If it weren't for the fact I'd been tracking down the man's whereabouts just now and had no time to look outside the gate, this time you would have been treated as an evil spirit and turned into a scorched corpse. Seems that I should thank her, but I don't want to. Fortunately, we have other things to talk about at this time. Well, she did slap me. I suppose that's why I don't wish to thank her. A man you mentioned is... Squeeze the mahogany sword in her hand. Evil spirit. It's the seventh night since that man has died, and I prepared early for his return to the pagoda. It's a yure? She stared at me with her deep, clear eyes and said slowly, Ghosts do not dissipate immediately. They wander this world. There's a boundary I do. He can't get in. If he dare come, he'll be torn apart. Are you here to exorcise the ghost? Oh my, so this is a recent spirit. This isn't from ancient times. But a man was so intent on discovering the treasure buried under this pagoda that in a real human week's time ago, he died here. And now he's a vengeful spirit. <laughs> Is a terrible ghost that tried to choke my neck the one you mentioned? Should be him. I didn't sense the breath of other spirits. Would he bother me who has nothing to do with him? Ah, they can't be speculated with human thoughts. All right, don't step out of the pagoda. I will stay with you, nice lady. Please protect me. Well, you are a ghost, but you have the foresight to worry about my family? I live alone, it doesn't matter. Is this ghost tea? I would love your tea. How? It's a waste to let you drink it. This is the tea I picked by myself. Perhaps because of the topic of interest, Kong Chan's expression looked a little gentler. I'm Kong Chan, a Taoist priestess from the Temple of Mystery. What's your name? My name is Kitaro. So many questions, but I don't know which one to ask first. After thinking, I decided to ask what I want to know the most. Is it true that people have spirits after death? Oh, Cube, you can't be acting like that, all right? There's, there's a man who just died a week ago, and he's trying to choke people. And if you're moving all around like that, he's going to come choke you. Is that what you want? Is that what you're after? Bringing on something terrible to yourself? The spirit after death. I have the perfect title for the song you did and for the highlight, the beautiful woman who searched her lost love in darkness. What a title, what a title. I'll remember that. Cube, did you hear my song? Did you hear my lovely song, Cube? Or were you too busy bouncing off the walls? No, no, says Cube. Now says Q, bouncing off the walls, missing everything, missing all of the good points of a stream. Look at that cube. Look at that cube just bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Whatever will he do? Whatever will he do? Besides bounce again. I didn't hear it, to be honest. I was bouncing off the walls. I bet you were. I've got you pegged. I've got your number. Mr. Bouncing Off the Walls Not Hearing Songs. Tisk tisk tisk. I bet you didn't even know that I almost got throttled by a ghost. You got me pegged. I got you pegged. I've got your number. I've got you on speed dial, baby, and I won't forget it. I didn't know. You didn't even know. I got throttled by a ghost. 
A seven day old ghost you didn't even know. Well, egg on your face. Egg on your face, isn't it? You come in here, you don't even know I got throttled by a ghost. How embarrassing. How embarrassing for you. You didn't even know about that ghost. You only know about this ghost. You only know about this ghost, Kong-chan. You don't even know about the other ghost. It's just like Adam Sandler's click. Well, ha ha ha. I've never seen that, but I know there's a remote control involved. I'm missing everything. That's what you get for bouncing off the walls with all that Baja Blast. You're just Baja Blasting into the next world. You're missing everything. It is like click. You're, you're gonna fast forward and your whole life is gone. Is that how the movie goes? Is that how the movie goes? I didn't see it, but I feel like that could happen. I feel like he could fast forward and, and then miss everything. Is that what happens? Yeah, 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 just, just like click. Just like click. That's how the movie goes. I don't know if we're joking or if this is serious. I don't, I don't know if I'm right or if I'm wrong. Isn't that funny? Don't Baja Blast everyone. You have to be careful. You have to be careful about Baja Blasting. It's very dangerous. <coughs> Cube is Baja blasting right now. It's pretty good drama. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll watch it. Maybe I'll watch it yet. She picked two pebbles up from the ground and put them together. Look at these pebbles I just picked up. Each one represents a world. The world we're in is one up here and the world of spirits is one down here. Are we not in the world of spirits? I can't believe we're in the realm of the living right now. Two pebbles flowed along the river, sometimes farther and sometimes nearer. In places where the water is gentle, they are far apart. In places where the water is fast, they occasionally bump into each other. When one pebble hits the other, the beings in the other world will come here. Can humans enter the other world? Sorry, just one of my cubisms to always bring up Adam Sandler's click. Is that a cubism? Is that a cubism to bring up click? A, a clicking cubish cubism? A Captain Cube cubism click? Well, look at that. Look at that. A real cubism right here, right now, at this 11.30 p.m. on a Monday night. You heard it here first, folks. Or maybe second, maybe third. I don't know how often Cube talks about click. I have somehow missed it. <laughs> I have somehow missed it each time. Dwe. Correct. River? What do you mean by the river? River is the universe. The universe we are in is not a whole, but a constantly flowing river. I don't understand. I think it's okay not to understand, or I should say it's right not to understand if you want to have a normal life. You look like you're carrying a heavy burden. It's getting late. Go to bed, little bird. I thought your points icon was pie filled with purple goo, but it's a drink. I am so silly. You are so silly. That is the foxtrot made with Empress Jin. Of course it's purple. I'm indeed a little a little sleepy after being throttled by a ghost. So silly. Kib, do you like this woman? I like this woman. Foxtrot was a comic strip I read. What? Get out of town. Am I allowed to fall asleep in the ghost world in a terrible pagoda? A really weird dream. Ew. I dreamed of endless underground caverns spreading beneath the ghost pagoda like a labyrinth. The underground labyrinth has intricate mechanisms and traps that can lead to a loss of lives. So I went on and along the deep underpass, and at the end of the underpass, instead of countless treasures, there was an empty crypt. A woman was standing in the middle of the crypt. It was Kong Chan. She looked at me sadly as if she wanted to tell me something, but could not say it out loud. 
I reached out to touch her, but she was ethereal as the morning mist and vanished the moment I touched her. Why does she make that face? <clears throat> oh, yeah? Well, the pagoda kind of looks lovely in the morning. There he is! Looking for you all morning! Yeah, apologize, bastard! Look at you! Is this the woman? This is not the woman, but she's very cute! J not, not Juyun. What is your name? I forget. Yeah, yeah. She's very cute, and I love her. I love her very much. But she's not the sword-wielding woman. I like this woman. I like this woman. She could tell me to kneel, and I'd kneel. I'd kneel for you, Yue. Yue Yu, rather. Ah, uh, yes, you do, Ji Yun. I would make him kneel. I'm kneeling. I'm kneeling. I kneel for her. God damn, look how cute she is. Look at her big old eyes. Look at her little hat. Good, he was scolded for stealing my bag and throwing it into a haunted pagoda. I'm kneeling like it's the Pledge of Allegiance. We're gonna pledge to Yue Yu. She's the only girl that makes sense. She knows what's wrong. She knows you don't throw a man's homework into a, a haunted, cursed pagoda. It is weird that we were inside the pagoda and then I was by a stream. The Wenxing Pavilion? They looked at each other as if I'd said something odd. What are you talking about? We were just talking about the ghost pagoda yesterday. We were talking about the ghost pagoda in class. What? What? But I... I went through the door. I felt dizzy. Was everything I saw last night a hallucination? I was haunted by the ghost of a man in the courtyard of the pagoda. It was saved by a Taoist priestess called Kong Chan. Oh, are you going to say you even found the lost treasure? <laughs> Juyun has no actual, what do you call it, remorse to him. What an asshole. I should give him a wedgie. I should give him a wedgie right now. <laughs> wow, I don't know how I got that from sleeping overnight in that place. Treasures cannot be shown to others. The biggest treasure in this pagoda is to realize a wish of the entrant. <laughs> this man sucks. He should be kneeling on his knees. Why did I bring him up? As long as sacrificing a man's soul to the ghost pagoda, the pagoda will fulfill his wish. I don't know why. When I looked at Ju Yun's face, I subconsciously chose not to tell him. It's strange. By the way, why would I know all these things? No, wait, it's weird to use the word no. Why am I so sure that these gibberish things must be true? Wow, the music is so silly. Ha ha silly visual novel song. How can there be a Taoist priestess these days? It's all made up by you. Is that a Ruzo trash can? That's very funny. Hello, crazy ghost. Welcome in. I got choked by a crazy ghost earlier. Sucked for me. 
Be silent, monitor. You know nothing. Sure enough, Chi Yue Yu believed me. I was so moved. I felt like I'm falling in love with her. I am falling in love with her. Oh, I thought she believed me, but instead she, um, she thinks I hit my head. I haven't the faintest idea what Sequele is, um, we're just gonna, we're just gonna pretend I didn't read that. I was moved in vain. After the monitor and Chi Yue Yu's joking, I calmed down a little bit and left out with them. Chi Yue Yu seemed to be relieved seeing my recovery. Everyone is concerned about you. Don't tell the teachers about the Taoist priestess, otherwise they may take you to the mental hospital. That's too much! In today's PE class, I had no interest to do any sports, so I sat far from the classmates. Just as I was about to close my eyes and take a nap, someone tapped me on the shoulder. It's the monitor. The guy who started it all. Aren't you going to play with the others? Not in the mood today. I got haunted all last night. I'm not in the mood for PE. What do you want? You said you went home last night. Well, you'll be punished if I tell the truth. Don't you hate me for what happened? I have more important things to think about right now than hating you. What a fantastic sentence! What a powerful statement! I have more important things to think about right now than hating you. Oh, I love that. Surface Tenchi, as much as I would love to beat this man up, <clears throat> apparently Kitaro is a better man than I. Whew. So I've just got to accept it. I've just got to move on. Yes, the ghost pagoda. Hmm. The Yuchi, our founding patron, seems to have paid for the school because he coveted the rumored treasure. Don't you know? Did he find it? How come? Why would he build the school if he had found it? He said that after he and his companion entered, the pagoda suddenly caught fire for no reason. Although the firefighters came soon, the two people still could not be found. May have been burnt into coke along with the wood. They were burnt into coke. What a terrible fate. Why am I getting closer and closer to that big shadow thing? I don't like that. Maybe they succeeded in making a wish and escaped the ghost but go to far away. You haven't given up yet. Why haven't I found out that you are such a stubborn person before? I cannot die for such a simple reason. An unprovoked flame of anger ignited in my heart and a plan gradually showed up in my mind. Come to the ghost pagoda with me and we'll see who's right. Why should I go to that horrible place with you? You're scared. Let's go then. You regret it? Surely not. I just feel that you are not the same as before, as if you are ten years older. When you look at people, you occasionally wear the kind of eyesight that adults have when they want to take children's pocket money as their own. Do you understand? No! I have never... I have never looked into a person's eyes and thought, yeah, they look like they want to steal a child's pocket money. I have never had that feeling once in my life. It's better not to take the ghost Pakoda thing to heart, Kitaro. Sure, good luck. So now it's after school. I didn't listen to the teacher's class, and for the classmates' sympathy, I was being perfunctory. 
My mind was full of the ghost pagoda, the mysterious Taoist priestess, and Li Chi, the treasure coveter. Although I argued with Zhu Yun that Li Chi had disappeared because of his wish, I know that the ghost who chased me before was Li Chi. His guess might be closer to reality. So what was the cause of his death? Maybe there will be no more troublesome incidents if I don't get close to that pagoda, but in an unseen world, I was pushed by someone to find the truth. What I feared still happened. After going to the boys' room, I returned to classroom for my last lesson. There seemed to be a commotion at the door of the classroom. The monitor stood frowning in the middle of the corridor. I greeted him. What's wrong? See for yourself. I looked in the direction he pointed. It was covered with gray footprints in front of the classroom. An ominous sign came. Who made this place so dirty? I ran my finger over the tracks. It seems exactly like the scorched ashes sprinkled in the courtyard of the ghost pagoda. Why do you even smell? Don't you think it's dirty? Isn't it odd? There are no footprints showing where it came from or went to. It's n not that odd. Uh, something may be knocked over the door. No, I know why. Everybody back to classroom, get ready for class. Who's on duty today? Sweep the place. Just sweep away the ghost prints. Uh, for forget that a ghost came in and came out and left dusty prints. Just go back to school. But no one would believe me if I told them that it was ghosts. What should I do? I can't even pay attention. Now I'm getting made fun of. A teacher is going to make me read this classic literature. The Mountain Bazaar. Yeah, you sitting next to me gently reminded me. It's Pu Songling's article. Mountain Bazaar in Mountain Huan is one of the eight scenes of the city. It has not been seen for years. Don't act like your mouth is full of pebbles. Well, my mouth is probably dry after what I saw. One day, Mr. Sun Yin Yan drank upstairs with friends. They suddenly saw a solitary pagoda standing on the top of the mountain and inserting into the sky. They looked at each other and felt shocked and concerned. They did not... A pop-up monastery? What if the ghost pagoda I went into last night just popped up out of nowhere? So there were two ghost pagodas last night? I think this is the right way to look into it. Keep reading. Setting sun sprinkled the classroom with a strange red, and this bloody red made me dizzy. At this point... Cracking, cracking. That's it. The sound of teeth grinding again. Cracking. It's strange. The way the sound overlaps with each other. It seems that two people are grinding their teeth. Does this evil spirit have a companion? The Chinese teacher once again urged me to continue reading the text. Suppressing my anxiety, I continued... Tens of palaces appeared. Ugh. My teeth suddenly itchy, and I grind my teeth subconsciously. Go to the dentist if you have bad teeth, Kitaro. Amidst the roar of laughter, I broke into a cold sweat. It turned out that I made the second crackling sound? Will I become the next evil spirit? I looked up suddenly. Oh no. On the blackboard behind the Chinese teacher, a large weird spot appeared where the mountain bazaar was written. No, it was clearly the shape of a man. It was a man's shadow? It's definitely not the shadow of a tree in the sun. The shadow slowly wriggled in an unusual posture. It's not a thing belonging to this world. The ghost mouth squirmed and a black charcoal round object rolled to my feet. It's a burnt tooth. It turns out what he had been chewing on is his own tooth? There was a discomfort in my stomach. What's wrong with you, Kitaro? I can't stay in school anymore. Come back here! No way! I gotta get out of here! That's all I can think about right now! I felt sick to my stomach and ready to throw up! That's enough! 
Why did this happen to me? I didn't do anything wrong. Even if it's the karma, I'm the most innocent and pure boy in the world and should be the last one to be punished. Sounds an awful lot like me. I'm rooting for Kitara. I ran all the way out of school, ignoring the guard. Along the street out of the school, I ran to downtown. It was bustling. I felt safe at the moment. Even the evilest ghost would not show up in a place like this. Damn it, why am I already admitting the ghosts exist? The dark spot could be the shadow of a tree, and someone might have spilled the chalk dust at the door of the classroom. The thing rolled to me is Ju Yun's little trick. But what about the thing happened to me last night? Was it a dream? Can there be such a real dream? A familiar voice came from behind. You're such a runner! Why didn't you try for the track team? It's Yeyu. She followed me all the way? I don't think I can make it. You did go through something, right? I thought you didn't believe me. Didn't you say you were going to put me in a mental hospital? You really know how to hold a grudge. You're in such a state that anyone seeing you will believe you are telling the truth. Let's have dinner first. Calm down. I made an excuse for you to the teacher. Don't worry. Yeah, you are such a good girl. We sat down in a cafe. There was a ghost behind the Chinese teacher just now? I didn't see anything. Could it be the tree shadow? You still don't believe me. I don't know. I'm a reporter for Discover. I can't quite believe what you're going through, but I can try to comprehend. Your expression is like you're trying to get stories out of me. Well, that is part of the motivation, but I really care about you. I'll be a little sad if you doubt it. The priestess told me last night it was the seventh night after the man's death. The first seven days, which is a custom of passing over the dead in ancient China. Was there any news of anybody died in the school seven days ago? The priestess was definitely talking about someone outside of school. I can't even imagine who. We can't follow this lead then. Well, change your mind. Which Taoist temple does this priestess belong to? The Temple of Mystery? And she called herself Kongchan? My family knows the Temple of Mystery well, so I've heard of Kongchan before. Rather than famous, she's legendary. In fact, the female Taoists are very rare, aren't they? And although the exorcism and elimination of filthiness is probably a psychological relief, she was particularly proficient in this aspect. She was a second to none in this area of Suzhou. Now that I remember, she came to the Ghost Pagoda 20 years ago. What brought her there? I don't know too much, but there were cases of strange disappearances in the Ghost Pagoda during that time. It seems that Li Qi's disappearance was at that time. Li Qi, do you know? The fire happened at that time, didn't it? These are just speculations. Perhaps that day Kongchan came to supersede Li Qi's soul, but failed to supersede it, causing a fire. Because I'm talking about what happened 20 years ago and you met Kongchan last night. How is she now, still in the Temple of Mystery? Mm. I remember she returned to secular life. Rumor has it she got married. She's not in the Temple of Mystery anyway. There seemed to be a string in my heart that had been touched. The old memories were brought back. What is it? Was it the words of Ti Yueyu? No, what came to my mind should have been something concrete. Do you have anything in mind? I have to go home now. What's so urgent? We haven't even finished dinner. I'm sorry. I suddenly thought of something important that I have to confirm. Please tell me. I want to know. 
My home is far from the school. More specifically, it's in the countryside. Is that more specific? When I got home, the moon had risen above the trees and was lighting coldly through the windows. I dug up an old carton from a shelf in the warehouse. It's filled with my mother's stuff. When I opened the carton, a musty, choking smell came to my nose. I had the outline of the thing in mind, so I rummaged through it cautiously. Is that a bronze mirror? No, a wooden comb? Just as I thought to turn over the bottom, that thing finally appeared. A collar? A collar with a wooden ornament. Something my mother wore before she died. That's it. Yesterday, I saw the same one on the neck of Kongchan. My mother was gone long before I could remember, but my father would often take the wooden ornament and whisper things that I could not understand as a child. Those words had been sealed in the deepest part of my memory until just now. Well, that is a detailed moon. Kitaro. Kitaro, the universe we live in. The universe we live in is not a whole, but a constantly flowing river. I think that might be the 33-day pagoda. Hey everyone, are we stuck in an ad break? Are we in an ad break right now? Should I hold off or should I keep reading? <laughs> let me know. Let me know if I should keep going or if we need to wait. Maybe take a moment in case. All right, all right. Oh, hydrate. Thank you very much. I could certainly use a hydrate right now. And another hydrate from Scrunt. Well, thank you, thank you. Don't mind if I do. I must say, I don't know what this 33-day pagoda that UA is talking about. I don't think there was any mention of it. Hmm... I guess we're just gonna have to keep reading and find out. It does say break ended, so we're gonna hope for the best. <coughs> a pagoda was originally used in Buddhism to bury the bodies of eminent monks, but it was used in a variety of ways after the fusion with Chinese architecture. After the confluence of Buddhism and Taoism in the Song Dynasty, the pagoda became an instrument of Taoism. <clears throat> the caster sacrifices a portion of their three souls and seven spirits in exchange for sealing the haunting evil spirit inside the pagoda-shaped instrument. Well, that's interesting. Perhaps a story 20 years ago was related to this magical instrument. But I still hold a glimmer of hope. If I bring my companion to the ghost pagoda, as Li Chi said, will my wish be fulfilled? Shall I see my mother? But how? After all, I didn't learn anything in Taoism. It's not good to keep hesitating. Just do it by instinct. Go to the ghost pagoda. I went to the place with the monitor as originally planned. Doesn't that mean he's going to sacrifice the monitor? <coughs> I think the monitor sucks, but I don't know that I would use him as a human sacrifice to see my dead mother I don't even remember. Sullen clouds, they say. Black and overwhelming, they say. The monitor was waiting for me under the tombstone, which had an ominous meeting. <clears throat> Been waiting you in this ghost place for two hours. I may also miss the appointment. Why don't you go back? He touched his nose, his eyes wandering. You covered that I threw your school bag. I should abide by the agreement between men. I'll be honest, there's not an agreement in this world where I would wait two hours. I might give you one hour. Maybe. 
I'd give you 30 minutes, most likely. An hour with no communication? I am gone. I had things to do. You know, this monitor has no friends. That's clear as day. He thinks this could be a chance to have friendship. <clears throat> I bet you anything. Oh my god, facing the loyal monitor as a Chunibyo, I suddenly regretted getting him involved. If anything goes wrong, I will definitely help him escape. I made up my mind. We turned and walked towards the ghost pagoda. The gate not closed. The pagoda was much more dilapidated than the day before. <clears throat> the decaying wood creaked as I gently pushed it open. It's a little more broken and there were some scorch marks on the ghost pagoda. Well, shall we find the treasure next? Underground? It said that this place was burnt down 20 years ago and the road leading to the under underground should not be there anymore. I grasped the pagoda-shaped magical instrument in my hand tightly as if I could get comfort from it. Mother, what should I do to find the treasure? I had no clue. This wooden pagoda only had one floor at the bottom. I need to gather the other floors to construct a complete pagoda? Just as I was confused, an unsteady vibration came from the pagoda in my hand. A small spire emerged from the top of the instrument and gradually extended. A wooden pendant became a complete pagoda. <clears throat> the wind blew up and the bronze bell on the pagoda banged loudly again. This time, the sound seemed to explode directly in my head. Juyun and I were dizzy for a while. I calmed down and found there was no one next to me. Juyun! Juyun disappeared. Ooh, what is that? Oh, that's bad! Meanwhile, dark objects emerged from the grass around and gradually they confirmed to form, form a ghostly figure twisted into an extremely unusual shape. I suppose it was Leechy's ghost. Instead of coming at me, it turned and stumbled towards the ghost pagoda. It must be the evil spirit Leechy that has taken Jiyun away. Now I can only pray that Jiyun has not been burned into coke. Burned into coke? How are you burned into coke? I hope he's not coke. <clears throat> By the dim light of the moon streaming through the windows and doors, I saw one man-sized dark entrance near the stairs. I climbed in and took out a flashlight. What came into view was a long tunnel. Oh, the Kongchan told me I wasn't supposed to open my eyes in the pagoda. I can't help but think that this is bad. I can't help but think that I'm cursing myself by using my eyes. Coke might be referring to a crude form of raw coal. Thank you, Scrunt. I had no idea. That makes a lot more sense than anything I thought of. Thank you for that. I bended into the tunnel and crawled to my surprise, although it was underground and very narrow. The concrete wall was dry and the ground did not hurt my knees. It was covered with shock-absorbing cushions. Narrow and dark space was not as difficult as I imagined. Ew. This comfort environment reminded me of my mother's womb passage. What the fuck? I seemed to forget something important, but that was not important anymore. Withering wind came from the front, marking the end of this long journey. Oh no. I climbed into a relatively spacious square, and there was a person standing not far away. I felt as if I knew him and walked straight at him. Chi <coughs> Shu Long? Is Shu Long possessing me? Li Chi, you said there are treasures here. Do you mean these arms from the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom? Hello? The moment the person in front of me opened his mouth, a strange and familiar memory poured into my mind. Yes, I am Li Chi, principal of Juwu Middle School, and the person standing in front of me is Qi Shilang, my partner and investor. 
You invited me to join and brought this pagoda for this all for this kind of thing? Of <coughs> course not, but the real treasure of this pagoda is only available to me. What are you going to do? There was a dagger out of thin air in my hand, and some familiar creaking sounds rang in my ears. Chi Shilong sat down on the ground because of my approach. I saw the look of fear on his face and a burst of overjoy and ecstasy that was about to come true suddenly rose in my heart. But what if that's the monitor? What if that's the monitor? I might be killing the monitor just now. Higarashi noise. Higarashi ga naku. Akatsuna mori yes. Only if you die, I can realize my wish. The moment the tip of the knife was about to kill Chi Shilang, my chest burned. Immediately, I was pushed aside by a strong force and the dagger was snatched away. A pagoda-shaped collar slipped out of my pocket. I grabbed it and after confirming it was not damaged, I was relieved. Slap. It was a crisp clap, and my right cheek swelled up. What are you doing? An angry voice sounded above. My whole body was shaken. My mind gradually became clear, and I remembered the cause and effect. I'm Kitaro. I'm here to find Ju Yun and the way to meet my mother. I knew it! I knew it! Ju Yun was lying at the place where Chi Shilang was, and it must have been a spell cast by the evil spirit Li Chi. As for my mother, I looked up at the frowning woman and shed tears. Ah. There was also a pagoda shaped collar on her neck. It's exactly the same as in my hand. Mom? A man never cries. All right, Kong Chan, I know you're from 20 years ago, but that's very outdated. Men can and should cry. And dear God, they should not rely on women to deal with all of their emotions. Let men cry and let us comfort them. Vanille for president, 2024, let men cry, God damn it. Then she turned her back, consciously blocking me behind and looked around vigilantly. Even if she didn't know who I am, Protecting me is like being branded in her soul. When I was in a daze, Kong Chan... No. Mother's stern and gentle voice sounded again. <clears throat> I know that you are deceived by the evil spirit. But if there is no desire in your heart, you will not fall into the trap to begin with. Remember, no wish in this world can be achieved by harming others. With guilt and sadness, I nodded heavily. Be careful, he is here! Suddenly, a violent wind blew in the arsenal, and in the northeast corner, a black figure condensed into substance. Li Chi. He seemed to hear me calling him, and in the next second, he flashed in front of my eyes. His face almost touched my face. This time, I can see his face clearly. His entire face seemed to have been burned, charred into charcoal, and no facial feature to be seen. Ah! He opened his mouth, revealing half of his tongue that was not scorched. The breath of the evil spirit sprayed on my face, and I seemed to feel the burning anger. Again, that sound was right in my ears, right in my headphones. That sucked. Why didn't you kill him? He is my friend, Ju Yun. I will not kill him. Chi Shulong is dead. Dead? Li Chi tilted his head slightly as if he didn't understand. Impossible. I, I just want him to help me find the treasure. You liar. Li Chi lunged at me. With a pop sound, a spell was stuck on Li Chi's face. Oh my god! There was immediately an explosion on Li Chi's face! My tooth! My tooth! 
Ew, Li Chi spat on the ground several times, only to see a pool of thick black liquid mixed with a few particles of invisible shapes. It turns out, his teeth were blown by you? Kong Chan didn't seem to have noticed Li Chi's abnormality, and was still conducting metaphysical education with me carefully. <laughs> Li Qi's memory stayed at the last moment of his life. At that time, he was bewitched by desire, but his human side was not extinguished, so he instinctively did not believe that he would commit a murder. Dangling? I didn't know when Li Qi picked up the dagger that I fell on the ground and tried to attack me again. Kong Chan drew out a peach wood sword and stopped him. Li Qi was forced to a corner by the Kong Chan. He seemed to be injured. The black mist became lighter, but it gathered back quickly. Sure enough, a thunder and fire talisman can't stop them. During the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom, an eyewitness reported that a businessman named Shang Yao had killed his companion at Wenxing Pavilion. In the court, Shang Yao claimed that there was a treasure in Wenxing Pavilion, so he went to find out with the companion, but his companion disappeared out of thin air. The court sent people to search, and it was true that the companion's body was not seen. In the absence of evidence, Shang Yao had been acquitted. Just after Shang Yao was released from prison, he also disappeared. Some people claim to have seen him haunt near Wenxing Pavilion. Did he get revenged by his companion's wraith? Well, since then, Wenxing Pavilion has been called the Ghost Pagoda. But after my ancestor's investigation at Wenxing Pavilion, he told me this name was wrong. The pagoda would trap the evil spirits of sinners. Killing is surely a sin, so is stealing. Neither of Shang Yao and his companion are innocent. It may be more appropriate to call it evil spirit pagoda. However, the number of evil spirits that the pagoda can hold is limited. As long as a new evil spirit is detected by the pagoda, it has a chance to escape. The evil spirit discovered this and it told other intruders, here is a treasure that can fulfill their wishes. Evil spirits cannot do it directly, so they tell the intruders that they need to sacrifice their companions to get the treasure, so as to investigate the intruders to fight each other, oh, instigate. I was also instigated before. All right, Sonic, good night. Have a lovely night. <laughs> well, you almost became a ghost in the pagoda. People who are confused by blindfolds and make the wrong choice will also be convicted of the ghost pagoda as a sinner. In the past hundred years, dozens of people have been buried here, and it should be over now. I put the child talismans all around the arsenal. Take the parent talisman and detonate it after leaving here. Oh, I have a lot to tell you! Li Qi seemed to know what Kong Chan was going to do, and condensed into a thicker shadow than before and roar roared towards Kong Chan. Kong Chan blocked him again, but her breath was obviously unstable. Go! Immediately afterwards, her expression relaxed and her misty eyes fixed to a real place. Although I have only met you twice, somehow you always made me feel very familiar, as if we have known each other for a long time. Although you are not gifted, a kind-hearted child like you will live in a peaceful era, 
and you will make a lot of friends. She knows? My tears flowed out uncontrollably. You will be admitted to university in the future and find a good job. It would be better if you could find someone you like to live with. I will! I will live happily, so please come back to me and look at me then, okay? I promise. Now! Go forward and never look back! Kongshan pushed me hard at my back. I fell into the tunnel and wanted to go back again, but there was an invisible wall at the entrance of the cave that hindered me from moving forward. I kept beating the wall. Mama! 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 Kong Chan didn't seem to hear my voice and was still dealing with Li Chi in that square space. The parent talisman in my hand emitted a dazzling light as if urging me to act quickly. Go forward. Don't look back. I muttered mother's words silently, and after crawling out of the cave, I set off the Thunderfire Talisman. The ghost pagoda was engulfed by fire. In an instant, the night sky was illuminated by fire as bright as day. The bell on top of the pagoda was slammed by the tossing airwaves, and an unknown god brought order out of chaos. I stood still under the pagoda. I killed my mother with my own hands. Now I only hope that the fire can also take me away. However, the fire passed through my body like a cool autumn breeze, like my mother's soft hands. I lost consciousness. I didn't think that this really has a meaning. Unexpectedly, there really was a god at this pagoda. Wish, I have an agreement with a boy. I wish to see him in the future. Five years? That's enough. Just take the 33-day pagoda as a token. After five years, you can take my soul. I had a dream. In the dream, my mother was holding me tenderly, and with the cry of a baby, she wore a smile. I'm back. I opened my eyes and found myself on the back mountain. Ju Yun's alive! How did Ju Yun escape? I thought we were both on fire. Thank God you finally woke up. Seeing the monitor in front of me, I hurriedly said, I'm sorry, monitor. Why are you sorry? You mean because you brought me here? No, I went there voluntarily. It has nothing to do with you. On the contrary, I feel a little sorry for you. As soon as I entered, I was blown into a wall by the wind and fainted. It must have taken you a lot of effort to get me out. Alas, I was so weak this time. I will show you my heroic side next time. I knew it! This poor stupid boy is desperate for friendship. He's such an asshole and he doesn't know how to be friends normally, so instead he's like, I will be a hero in a haunted pavilion. You'll see. Why can't you just be nice and not a stick up your ass, man? Yeah, you gets it. Yeah, you gets it. Monitor, next time if you take the lead in such a dangerous thing, I will tell the teacher. Actually, I asked the monitor to go there with me, but it's obviously not suitable to tell to you now. Sorry, monitor, you are the scapegoat this time. <laughs> well, since Kitaro is okay, let's go back together. It is also the duty of the monitor to escort you back. A brave man like you should be able to walk home. 
Didn't you want to? Didn't you say you want to show your heroic side? It's so scary. I know. See you at school tomorrow. After Ji Yun left, the surroundings suddenly became quiet. I checked the time, the hand of the watch pointing at four o'clock in the morning, which is the darkest hour before dawn. I look at Chi Yue's face, or Chi Yue Yu's face, and there was a complex emotion in my heart. You told the monitor to throw my bag to the ghost pagoda. You gave me information about the ghost pagoda to get what you want. And to break my mother's boundary into the ghost pagoda, the cookies you sent me were laced with magic potions. No, why would I do these things? Don't try to fudge it, it'll make me feel worse. What on earth? She looked up into the far sky. There was nothing but black emptiness. I'm sorry, will you forgive me if I say it's all about the material for the newspaper? Somehow I can't accept such a silly excuse. I think you may be possessed by Li Qi's ghost. I'm sorry. There is no such thing as a supernatural being. Perhaps because I've always lived in common sense, I cannot accept your statement. Alright, I don't like Yue Yu anymore. Yue Yu can die alone. There are absolutely supernatural beings. How dare you? You put me in such danger. Qi Shilong, is your grandfather? I noticed before that Qi... Yue Yu looks very similar to Qi Shilong. Wait a minute. Maybe it wasn't for the newspaper, but actually to find out why her grandfather disappeared? Qi Yue Yu nodded. She stopped talking. We walked back home in silence. When we reached the fork in the school gate, the sky in the distance showed the first glimmer of dawn. She finally spoke. My grandpa is a very gentle and kind person, but he died for no reason 20 years ago. I have been tracing people and events related to the Ghost Pagoda since then. That's why I joined the editorial department. You knew my connection to Kongchang before? When the monitor recorded the student's family background for the teacher, he showed it to me. If the monitor knew that you made friends with him for this reason, he would cry. Kitaro. Chiyueyu tried to speak but stopped. It was clear that based on her behavior and position, she had no right to inquire about what happened in the ghost pagoda. I sighed. Twenty years ago, Qi Xilong, as an investor, bought one Qing pavilion with Li Qi. Li Qi was bewitched by the treasure and was killed and killed Qi Xilong. As for my mother, I don't know how she left the ghost pagoda. Maybe in the unseen world there really was a god protecting her. The spine that Qi Ye Yu had been supporting as relaxed as if she was finally relieved. Thank you, Kitaro. Qi Ye Yu lay crying in my arms, her tiny body shaking with sobs. I forgive you. If it was my grandpa, I'd probably do the same. She left my arms, tears in her eyes. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow, Kitaro. We parted at the fork in the road. I looked up to I looked to the school at the standing ghost pagoda. I wonder whether what I experienced in the ghost pagoda was real or a hallucination under the influence of veritaserum. Maybe I'll never be able to figure it out. But at the end of the day, it's not a bad experience to have a girl in my arms, is it? Ha <laughs> ha!
Wait a minute, I feel like something's missing. I touch the trouser pocket where I put my mother's belonging. It's empty? Yeah, yeah! I looked in the direction she had left. She was waving at me from a distance, holding my mother's legacy. Give it back! Don't be kidding! She made a face at me and ran away. I must take it back tomorrow. It looks like sky, but I don't know that it is. Do you think ghosts exist in the world? Oh, now we're back at the, the very, very beginning. This beautiful Chinese hotel where we go to the pavilion and this kind, strange man is telling me ghost stories. Surface Tentry says, I'm actually going to head out myself. Take care. Thank you, thank you. We have reached the end of it. So this was a good time for you to head out. And thank you for the hydrate. Much appreciated. <clears throat> I suppose that ghosts are linked to some specific memories. The ghost of a particular person lives on, I think, until the last person holding that memory dies. Isn't that the theme in Coco? That ghosts continue on as long as they're remembered? There must be one person remembering them, or they fade away into obscurity. Interesting concept that lives on across cultures. Yes, being forgotten by everyone is the true disappearance. By the way, it's the 15th of July in the lunar calendar, the Hungry Ghost Festival. Yes. That's why I asked you earlier if you're waiting for any person. Yes. Are you waiting for any person? It is said that during the Hungry Ghost Festival, spirits of the dead will return to this world along with the water. The road of Huangchuan is dark and empty, so I light a dim lamp here. Hoping to guide my dead friends. Oh, that's beautiful and sad. I see. Your friends will be pleased to know that you cherish their memories with them. Perhaps my old friends arrange our meeting tonight. Let's cherish this meeting tonight. All right, that was great. That was much fun. And it wasn't too scary. I was able to stick with it, even though I was very, very scared at certain parts. Ah, <sighs> that was a good time. Did you guys enjoy yourselves? Ooh. I'm gonna get readjusted here. All right, we gotta find someone to raid. All right, I think I know who I wanna raid because I've been wanting to watch this person play this game. It's a game I like and a lady I like, which is a very, very good combo. Are you all still with me? Yes, the raid has been created! Alright, well thank you all so much for joining me for my first stream back in a long time. I must say, sickness has taken a lot out of me. Not that I was doing nothing, I did do that lovely little uh, song cover with Jack, but it has been hard to get things done, being as a... Uh, held up as I was, but there will be more vanilla content coming soon, and I hope to see you all Wednesday with my dear darling Mocha. Thanks for stream, was comfy as always. Thank you, Naputan. Thank you so much for joining and for your kind, kind words. 
Oh shit, we need a raid message. Um, we could just say Haunted Pagoda Raid. That might be easiest. Haunted Pagoda Raid. Then we'll bother dear Fang. Oh, I love Fang. I love Fang so much. I hope you're all already following her. But if not, do follow my darling. She is so talented, so clever, such a fantastic artist, hilarious, an absolute doll. All right, everyone, be on your best behavior, and I'll see you Wednesday and Saturday. Come again soon. <laughs>